uh, 32 cases that are community spread where they're not inside of a long-term care facility. And of those 32 cases, 31 have recovered. So we currently have one active case who is aware that, that they're positive and they are actively isolating in their home and won't be able to return to the population until they meet certain criteria for clearing out of isolation. Um, we have in Massachusetts, the fatalities have increased. We are over 4,000 now, we're at 4,090 for total fatalities in the, in the Commonwealth. Barnstable County remains at 47 since yesterday. <clears throat> and Harwich, we are reporting six deaths in Harwich. Um, to our community, deaths where they weren't related to a long-term care facility and the others are long-term care facility related. Um, we've had some questions about Wingate specifically, some emails and some questions about um, who reports the numbers and how do we know what the, what's going on inside the facility and long-term care facilities are, are run by private entities, it's a private business, at least this one is, um, and they are, an epidemiologist is assigned to them from the state. So other cases that are outside in, in the community at large are, are tracked and traced by our contact tracers, the, the visiting nurse association. So someone from local board of health contracts to do that tracing with a long-term care facility, it's taken over by the state. So they are in contact with the facility every day to get updates on the numbers of positive cases, negative cases, staff members who call out, um, and the situation inside the facility as far as isolation requirements and moving patients into, into separate areas to try to slow or, or decrease the spread. Um, I am not sure if the National Guard tests go directly to the MAVEN system or if there's a lag in between because the daily dashboard from mass.gov does not reflect the, the Wingate numbers. They are still reporting at less than 10 and that's inaccurate, but I believe it's just an, an, a lag in the, uh, um, in the reporting, uh, so I know we have we have an issue at at long at the at the Wingate in Harwich, and I've been in contact with the director of nursing there, and even our VNA has been in contact with the epidemiologist at the state to make sure everything's under control and they have all the PPEs they need. Um, we have given them some of our stock here at the. At, through Harwich EOC, they've put in requests through DPH for additional gowns and gloves and masks. Um, I don't believe they've received them just yet, but they are in the queue for disp dispersal. Um, so I just want to assure the public that those cases that are positive inside Wingate majority are residents. There are some staff that do work in other areas and work outside of that facility, possibly at, at other facilities. And those workers uh, should be educated and, and are educated in personal hygiene and taking on and off personal protective equipment to make sure that they are not spreading the disease from room to room or from facility to facility. Um, so more, more work needs to be done as far as tracing that. Um, but we, we are in contact with Wingate. So I, I want everyone to know that it's an ongoing process and, and we're, we're watching it. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Megan. Uh, questions for uh, or comments for Megan or Joe? Uh, Megan, I used to have a comment. My experience is, is pretty limited since I'm hiding out here, uh, I guess as everyone else. But it seems like, it seems as when I go to the uh, Stop and Shop or CVS, 
people are being really careful about distancing and masks. I see very few that are trying very hard to abide by uh, your directions. So I, I take some comfort in that. I'm not sure what other observations are, but uh, yeah, I think our neighbors are, are doing well. Larry? Yes. Don. Don. Your observations are fine up to the point where they're not observing the arrows and they're pointing right at each other, walking past them. Well, I was being kind and didn't mention that. And I, I actually, the first time I missed it an hour or two because I didn't look at the floor to see the arrows. They might move them up to waist high or something, but I'm a quick learner. So I did catch it after, I think I missed one aisle. Anyone else question or comments? Um, as, as always, good work, and I think we're. This is so. This has been exciting, but I, my guess is it's going to become more exciting as we move our next phase of trying to uh, transition to uh, uh, more to businesses opening up hey. again. So, so Steve, hey, Larry, Larry, can I just a quick question for Megan? Um, of the ninety-four, are are you saying that thirty-one of those have recovered? Is that correct? No. Um, so there's a total of 94 cases in Harwich. 61 okay. of them are in, in Wingate. Okay. 32, um, 32 of them are within the community. And the others were from long-term care facilities outside of Harwich where they contracted COVID and then either came home or um, their numbers were kind of stuck in Harwich because their address is Harwich. Right. But of the of the 32 that are within the community, 31 have recovered. So right now within okay. the community, we have one active case. Um, all of the the cases within Wingate um, have either are either still considered active, or uh, um, four of them have passed away. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Megan or Joe on this? I, I assume the next uh, uh, directive that we're looking forward to is probably May 18th and if something unusual happens, is that the uh, key date we're looking at? Oh, that's correct. The, the governor, uh, they continue to do their uh, weekly calls uh, with managers and administrators um, updating us on the work of the advisory committee and the advisory committee, uh, the Lieutenant governor confirmed today that they will come out with their final report on the 18th. And that's when they would unveil their phasing process, uh, to try to get the economy back to where it was before. So, um, as you said, barring anything unforeseen, we're anxiously awaiting the work of the advisory group and their report on the 18th. Okay. Uh, thank you, Megan and Joe again. If there's no other questions or comments, uh, I move to next is uh, new business and it's discussion and possible vote to authorize the year for masters, the uh, master services agreement of the ACOM uh, municipal uh, storm sewer system. And uh, Joe, I'll let you uh, start this and then I assume we will uh, call in Griffin is needed. Well, I'm gonna cut out the middleman, Mr. Chairman, go directly to our town engineer. Uh, Griffin Ryder to explain the, the next two items and I'm going to step away for a moment and work on my personal lighting. Okay. I recognize the engineer for you. Thank Hi everyone. You know, Go ahead. Thank you, Barry. Hi everyone. Griffin, Griffin Ryder here. Um, I have two things before you tonight um, and they're really one and the same at this point. Um, it's a master services agreement um, with AECOM who is our, our um, consulting engineer helping the town with um, MS4. Uh, MS4 is municipal separate storm sewer system compliance. And that's a regulatory requirement that is uh, administered uh, by the EPA and DEP, um, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, and locally uh, the state uh, Department of Environmental Protection. Um, and basically what it is, is um, it's a five year permit um, and there's different uh, activities that are required of the municipality for each one of the years. We are going into year two. Um, we reported year one last year. Uh, AECOM has helped the town um, over the years um, 
by mapping and, and helping us get ready for this um, permit. That was kind of a long time in the, in the in the making. So the master services agreement is a two year agreement. And what that does is basically allows us to um, we came to agreement on, on terms and conditions. Um, and as as each year comes up, we can do a task order. Um, and those task orders would be presented to the Board of Selectmen for signature. Um, and and we wouldn't need to basically negotiate terms and conditions with, with each one of these years. And this this two year agreement will actually buy us three fiscal years. So the first the first item on the agenda is is the MSA agreement, and the second item is the first task order that would fall under the MSA agreement, and that task order is for a total of thirty one thousand two hundred dollars. Um, I believe uh, there was I believe it was forty thousand dollars was budgeted for this in the engineering department budget. Um, there, there was a mix of uh, other things that were budgeted, but it was about a total of about sixty thousand dollars in technical services budget. Um, of which 40 was supposed to be used for this and working with AECOM and, and trying to pick up some of, of, of the scope items, we were able to get that down to about $31,200. So that's what task one, uh, the task order is for. Um, and instead of boring you with more details and, and acronyms, um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, doors open, anyone uh, questions for Griffin? Uh, Steve, are you on? I am on. I look at the green sometimes when you're trying your phone. I'm just I, sometimes it's a key that you're going to ask a question. Uh, sure. Don, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just out of curiosity, because you know my feelings over the past couple of years on this uh, exempt classes of contracts. What kind of process did we go through uh you know to recommend this uh, company um we didn't go through a long selection process we, aecom has, has been the town's um consulting firm for for a few years back uh, i don't know exactly how many years but at least the past three or four years uh they were very helpful in, in helping me get through last year's reporting term which you know i didn't have a lot of uh, experience or uh, background knowledge of so they've been very helpful through the process. Um, it did go through an extensive legal review process with KP Law. So that that's actually what, what has slowed it down a little bit, uh, unfortunately. Um, so KP Law was very involved with, with the review of the legal terms. Well, there's, there's what's, KP Law has a history of this, of covering our, our collective you know what's uh, based on what we want to do and what's legally sufficient or minimally sufficient. But I'm just wondering in, in the future how much this could aggregate up to and if there were if it did get significant, if we would, you know, for the extensive engineering work, if we would wind up going out. Because CDM Smith wound up getting their foot in the door and they've not left the room yet. That's a, Don, you make a good point. One of the things that I, uh, we've made very clear with, with AECOM is, you know, when we signed this, when we were negotiating the master services agreement, you know, it's kind of written for all engineering tasks. And, and what my comment to them was, we, we're only going to use you for this MS4 work. If we're doing other engineering work in town, we're going to go out to bid for that type of work. We're going to continue to use these guys because they have the knowledge and the experience and the background um, to continue with this. And, and you know, if we, we, we could go out to bid, but I, I, I we, but we're willing to bet that most other co companies would come back in higher because they would have to catch up and get and build that background knowledge so then they can do the work that AECOM is doing for us now. When this permit term um, comes to an end, that would be a really good um, time to potentially go out to bid um, with multiple engineering firms um, for the for the next permit term, if that makes sense. No, it does. Thank you, Griffin. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Okay, thank you. Other questions for Griffin? Uh, the question is actually more related, or it, it goes along with um, Don's comments and about pasts. And um, in the past, um, and I know Don in particular has asked for this on almost every contract for the past couple of years, um, we, we were getting memos from the uh, town administrator at, uh, with kind of a recommendation on this, uh, that he recommends that this get done. Are we, are we not doing that anymore? That's number one. And number two, um, we were also getting from the finance director that the funds were there, that it was certified. Maybe I'm missing it, but I don't see that either one of those pieces. 
So I can speak to the overall uh, memo. Um, quite honestly, this was a desire to get it. We were trying to get this on for the Thursday, April 30th. Uh, we weren't successful, so we pushed it out to May uh, 4th today. Um, I had to rely upon the memorandum that's in the packet, um, and I advised the engineer to proceed in that manner um, to try and expedite this. Um, I, I've worked with Griff on this, uh, both as assistant town administrator and as interim. Um, I stand by and support everything he said. And I know he's going to tell you in just a moment that he has confirmation from our finance director who is on the call that uh, the funding is there and confirmed. Yes, thank you. Um, we, we did have a conference call with Carol um, last week about this and discussed, you know, the funding um, or actually it was to discuss something else, but we, we talked about this quickly. Um, and then I followed up with, with Carol through email last week and then through a phone call today, Carol did provide um, the signature uh, page for the task order um, with with her signature as to the appropriation and, and the monies there. So just that, that was, I should have had that in the packet. And I apologize for that being a little bit late. So just to follow up to that, Griffin, is that signature in the packet tonight on the task order? Am it's, I missing it? No, it, you were correct. It is not in the packet tonight. It, it, I, I got it this afternoon. Okay. Well, I, I, I trust that it. I trust that it's been done. But it, I guess the question now is to Larry and to the rest of the board: Is this a practice that we're going to continue with, or is this a practice that we're not going to continue with? No, I think the uh, the intent is a practice that we agreed to. It got delayed this time, but a covering memo in the sign off from the uh, finance director. I see no reason to change that practice, Michael. Thank you, and thank you, Griffin and Joe, for the explanation. Okay, if there's no other questions, I'd entertain a motion. We can take two motions. If we have motion on item A and then motion on item B, we, would, we can uh, move ahead. Okay, I'm happy to do it if you want me to, Larry. This is Steve. Sure. Okay, uh, on item A, vote uh, to authorize the chair to sign for master services agreement MSA with AECOM ACOM for continued EPA DEP municipal separate storm sewer system MS4 compliance support. Second, Michael. Okay. Michael seconded. Any other discussion? Don, just not, for the record, Don, just for the record, Larry, Don seconded that. I'm sorry. It, it's okay either way. I I uh, heard uh, could distinguish. Been moved and seconded. I'll take a roll call vote. Don, I'll start with you. Aye. Steve. Aye. Michael. Aye. Ed. Aye. And I'm an aye. So it's unanimous. Uh, do we have a motion on item B? Okay. Um, vote to authorize the chair to sign. Uh, uh, well, here, let's see, uh, to authorize task one under the MSA in the amount of $31,200 for FY20 MS4 compliance support. Second. So Don, thank you, it's been seconded. Any other discussion? Again, I'll take a roll call. Uh, Michael, I'll start with you. Aye. Ed? Aye. Steve? Aye. Don? Aye. And I'm an aye. So it's, uh, both motions have been, uh, been voted unanimously. And Griffin, thank you for your help on this. Larry? Good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah, can I just interject one thing? Because, I mean, I agree with Michael. We had some processes that kind of got derailed because uh, we're, we're in a different place from where we used to be. But um, one of the things I know is that you're not supposed to use initials in the agendas, like DEP, EPA. I, I just want to point out that we should be spelling those things out. I'm sorry, I, Don, I'm sorry about that. This is Steve, I should have, I should have, you know, said what they were. No, 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 it's written that way. I'm just saying that uh, we're, we're not supposed to use like, abbreviations or, yeah. No, uh, point taken, Don. Those two are so common, it's easy to fall into that, but we need to watch ourselves. 
Okay, thank you. We'll move next to uh, item C. And Joe, I'll, I'll turn that discussion over to you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As I had mentioned in the board's meeting on April 30th, uh, as as we, um, and, and I'm just realizing now I didn't make reference to it, but I've been saying all along, uh, at this point tonight, we probably would have been a few articles into our annual town meeting, um, recognizing that we've pushed that off until uh, June 22nd. Uh, we do need to bring ourselves to some critical discussions on fiscal year 20, and that is um, how the town wishes to proceed going forward um, on certain things such as seasonal staffing, uh, beach stickers and disposal and things like that. So there are four items or four sub items that are on the agenda uh, for a broad discussion this evening by the board, uh, then to be followed up with more specific uh, actions at future meetings. Uh, but I did ask the um, uh, recreation director, he's uh, joined us this evening and ready to answer any questions, offer any insights as well as our, our DPW director on the disposal fees. And you've seen his um, proposal in the packet and our finance director and finance committee chair are on the call as well. But this is really um, the first of what I expect to be several uh, discussion points that we'll have uh, tonight. I just wanted to get the ball rolling by putting out a general topic. You know, where does the board um, want to go with regard to seasonal staffing for the summer season uh, and I know it's a, I, I, there's a reason why there's not a specific action tonight because I, I think it's far too early for us to be able to make decisions ahead of Governor Baker's uh, advisory group waiting to see what he says about groups of greater than 10 and all that um, but I did want these topics to be put out here tonight to, to start a discussion. So the first one, Mr. Chairman, that would be seasonal staffing. I remind the board that we're still under an active hiring freeze. Uh, and we, um, we may be able to avail ourselves of uh, temporary reassignments rather than seasonal staffing, if that's an appetite for the board and for the collective bargaining units. Uh, but I just wanted to at least get something out there to start the discussions. Uh, thank you, Joe. I'll turn over floor, uh, turn over to the floor. Uh, the unfortunate truth is, as we know, is that our revenues are is going to be significantly less in fiscal year 21 than that, but had, we had budgeted. So we're going to have to uh, make some changes. Not all of these are going to be comfortable. But just let's get some comments on seasonal staffing. And uh, uh, Eric, maybe I'll start with you since Joe invited you sure. about how we would, uh, what are our options with, uh, with, as I said, limited uh, resources. Yeah, that, can you hear me guys? This is Eric. We can, Eric. Yeah. Okay, okay, great. Um, yeah, I, in, the, in the month and a half uh, since this has been going on, I've done a couple things. and. One of them is I've been in pretty constant contact with other towns and beach managers uh, across the Cape. Um, the other thing I've been doing is every day doing at least three rounds to beaches to see how people are reacting to the current restrictions. Um, I've noticed on my rounds, especially on nice days like today, predominantly people are doing very well. Um, they're staying away from each other. I'd say 90% of them have masks on um, or masks available. Um, in my discussions with other recreation directors and beach directors. No real final decisions have been made on beaches in other towns yet, but most other towns are working towards full opening of the beaches um, with certain things in place. Um, some towns have talked about um, limited parking, but there's a, there's a whole host of problems that go along with that, including um, drop-offs. Um, no matter how much you limit parking, there's going to be drop-offs. People kind of find their way to the beach, and you'll still have a ton of people on the beach. Um, so a lot of towns are getting away from that. Um, the positive of a full opening is that we'd have our full complement of lifeguard staff. We'd also have our gate attendants at the gate, and we have beach supervisors as well as myself, Sue Fraser, my assistant, our two parking officers, that do rounds of beaches all day long, every day. So while the guards are watching the water, gate attendants are handling the parking, all the people uh, that I just mentioned can easily monitor the beaches um, to make sure that the 
the regulations are being followed. Um, so that's what, you know, I'd like to see happen. Uh, of course, it's, it depends on what the governor tells us as well. And that's the trend I'm seeing with other towns. Um, specifically, um, I know Brewster was mentioned as a comparison, but they're, they're very hard to compare to for us. They only have two or three lifeguards that they hire every year. Their only guarded beach is the one side of Long Pond, whereas we have 30 guards and seven guarded beaches. So it's a tough comparison there. But in talking with other towns like Chatham, Barnstable, Dennis, Yarmouth, they're all looking to at least get their full opening by the end of June, which is when we would be doing it. June 27th would be our scheduled opening day. Um, so staff, there is a hiring freeze. Um, but I do have staff lined up, ready to go. Um, there's 30 lifeguards on staff last year. 27, 27 of them have requested to return, which is a great number for us. So um, other hurdles we'd have to get over with a full opening, um, and I, I can consult with Link on this as well, is restrooms. Um, if you have beaches open, you pretty much have to have restrooms open. And if the restrooms are open, they're definitely uh, a host for germs. And we have to figure out something for more frequent cleanings and monitoring of how many people go in at once. Um, that would be the big one for us. Um, and also, I have talked to other staff about putting things in place where if we do have a full opening and no restricted parking, um, and it, it is a very nice day and we have a packed beach, we could put into effect uh, a point in time where our gate, gate attendants can shut down access temporarily until the, the crowd's been out. Um, so pre very preliminarily, that's what we're thinking. Um, obviously in an ideal world, we'd like to open it up just as we always do. There are hurdles to get by, but I think with the staff that we have, we normally have, it's doable on our part. Mr. Chairman, I just ask Eric to also give a, um, a snapshot based on last year, the rough costs of Revenue generated and expenses um, sure. accounted for. Yeah, I have uh, specific numbers here. Um, so this year for expenses, we requested um, $218,000 for staff. That's all beach staff, including lifeguards, supervisors, water uh, waterfront directors, parking enforcement officers, and gate attendants. And the beach revenue from last year between um, Stickers, day passes, our food vendors um, was $442,000. So it's, it's beneficial to us to be able to open the beaches from a safety standpoint, because people are going to go to the beach whether our guards are there or not, and from a revenue standpoint. All right, Eric, what, what would be your best guess of revenues this year if you're partially open, uh, possibly no yeah. food vendors? Uh, certainly be yeah, less uh, than last year. Yeah, I, I would expect, you know, if we do do partial opening, um, it's, it's going to be a significant hit on that 442 number I just mentioned. Even if we have full opening, you may see some less numbers based on people's uh, resistance to coming out to the beach. But I do, I, I'm confident that in either situation, it would still bring in enough to cover the direct beach staff costs. Other questions for Eric and Joe on the uh, first time is we're covering uh, seasonal staffing, at least in to the rec and the beach access uh, and beach uh, sale stickers. Other comments, questions? Barry? John? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Two comments, basically. Uh, the first one is more of a Megan thought. Uh, is there any indication of when the governor would be taking down those, if you're not from around here, you need to self uh, quarantine for 14 days? I'm not sure of the answer to that. I don't know if Megan's still on. Yep, I'm still here, Eric. Oh, okay. Yep. I, um, <laughs> I don't foresee that restriction coming down before the 18th of May, that stay at home advisory and that self quarantine for 14 days if you're coming from out of state. I can see it being 
I can see it being relaxed for um, some states that have better numbers than we have, uh, but we're still seeing a pretty good increase from New York City. So I would imagine that state is still considered the hot spot, but soon people will be telling other states will be seeing Massachusetts as the hot spot, so they won't be letting us come to their states. Um, but I don't see him restricting that before the 18th. And even after that, it may not be a specific where you're coming from, but if you're coming from anywhere outside of Cape Cod, we may be seeing a quarantine for 10, 10 to 12, 10 to 14 days. What kind of leads me to the second point in the conversation, uh, as Eric pointed out, part of this is once you hire these people, that's a fixed cost, but the revenue is variable depending on how much this is spread around uh, as, I don't personally want to see us sending a mis mixed message where you've got a day pass on the one hand, which essentially would allow somebody to blow into town on a Friday night, come to the beach on Saturday and then leave uh, from another part of the state or another state entirely, if they felt like they wanted to. It was kind of an inducement. I mean, I mean, personally, I would rather not see anything that's one day. Hi, this is Eric again. Um, as, yeah, as far as day passes go, out of that, from last year as an example, out of that 442000 in revenue, the day passes only accounted for $77,000 of that. Um, so the bulk of it, three quarters of it, is the, the, the stickers, the resident stickers. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Eric. Larry? Other questions sure. for you? Uh, Larry? Uh, Ed? Please go ahead. Of course, the, the other take is you don't allow day passes, and, and those people coming for just a day from uh, out of the area, wherever, just decide, okay, well, I can't park my car there. I'll just get dropped off. So there, uh, there's be uh, unless we're checking IDs. There's no. Um, no way to prevent that. I mean, if people yeah, are coming and, and, and need to uh, self quarantine, either they're going to do it or they're not, um, because we have no way of enforcing that. Um, that's, I just that's didn't want to make it easier. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, but it, it's. You know, if they don't if they don't buy a day pass, they'll just have somebody drop them off if they want to go to the beach. This has been a uh, long term discussion before this came about of suggesting we have armbands to prevent overcrowding in some of our beaches, like Bank Street, which we uh, always shied away from. I'm told they do it in New Jersey, but that's enough for most of us to shy away from it in itself. But uh, anyone else? Larry, if I may. Michael, please. Eric, could you tell us what the difference uh, cost-wise between a day pass and a, and a uh, seasonal pass is? Yeah, the day pass, uh, well, a day pass is $20. And the uh, resident season sticker is 25 currently. What's the non-resident? Non-resident uh, season? Yeah. One, 150 Okay. All right. So my point in that, uh, well, first, Eric, thank you very much for putting this material together um, sure, and, being, and being on the call tonight. Um, my first point is I'm the one that mentioned Brewster, but it wasn't related to comparisons. It was related to looking at what their beach plan was, which I thought to be very okay. helpful. And I still think we should do that. Um, sure. As far as the weekly pass, I mean, the daily pass versus the uh, season pass, Let's not assume that people come flying into town for one day at the beach in Harwich. People rent houses here for a week or two, and it's, it's less expensive for them as they plan their vacation to buy a day pass if they know they're only gonna go to the beach for a day or maybe two or maybe three. Um, I, I'm also a fan of keeping the beaches open, and I think I would look to Megan's guidance and, and you, Eric, as well, to put a plan together for the board and, and as much as I do appreciate all the numbers that we're doing tonight and the fact that it was mentioned that this is a preliminary discussion, again, there's nothing in our packet 
So you did work on comparisons uh, on other towns. Well, I'd like to see the comparisons and, and, and basically get uh, in writing from you, do we need 27 lifeguards or do we need 24 lifeguards? And do we need a lifeguard at every beach? You know, and, and do we need to plan the same way? Um, and, and, you know, who knows where we're going to be in two weeks with this. It's certainly not going to be gone, but is it going to be getting lighter? So I, I would appreciate the comparison work that you did in writing to the board, um, your suggestion in writing to the board, Megan's thoughts on the beaches and social distance uh, in writing to the board so that the next time we have a conversation on this, we have a complete packet with everybody's thoughts that are involved, uh, as well as what we think we can do to manage social distancing at the beach. Uh, but I certainly, uh, you know, we, we have weekly visitors. Um, we have people that rent houses for two weeks, people that rent houses for a month, people that own homes down here that only use them for a week or two weeks or three weeks. Um, and so I don't want to be one to assume, assume anything, but, but especially the day passes, um, because I don't think that there's going to be much of a difference between who's using the beach and what type of pass we sell. Uh, Michael, we'll certainly bring this back with a more detailed discussion to uh, provide that information. Um, I too, Eric, uh, one of the questions I had is, is that the number of ice cars we need, you know, obviously we need them at, you know, for instance, Red River and uh, Bank Street, but do we need them in some of our lakes, for instance? Do we back up and D and uh, limit our costs somewhat on that? So I'd like a further discussion on that going forward. Larry, as long as all the items that Michael Michael mentioned, Michael. Yeah, Larry, if I may, and, and to your point on the uh, discussion on the lifeguards, Eric, if we could get a sense of um, certainly, we've always prided ourselves in having lifeguards at our beach, and I think it's a great idea. Can we get a sense of of the other towns that you're that you're working with on what they do on a normal basis for lifeguards, as well as what they're planning on doing going forward with lifeguards? Yeah, I think that's all that information. I to, together. Eric, can I, uh, uh, let me follow that thought. Uh, a few years ago, I think it was Sandwich, for uh, budgetary purposes, dropped the use of lifeguards on their beaches. Um, and we all disagreed with that. But do you know how that worked out for them, having beaches open without lifeguards? I could certainly uh, touch base with them and see how it worked out. I haven't heard anything, but... Um, you know, I, I just think it would be such a serious safety risk uh, to do something like that. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they got a lot of complaints about that, but I could I could touch base with them and see what their thoughts on, on that are. Okay. Hey, Larry. Hey, Larry. Uh, safety sure. board. Yeah, I mean, uh, they could also help uh, with the um, social distancing as well. I know that in other states, that's what they're having the lifeguards do as well as you know, keep an eye on the, on the water and people uh, who are in the ocean. Um, they're also, you know, having them try uh, to make sure that people are uh, keeping their distance. I, I would also say I did, at Michael's recommendation, the last meeting, I did go and take a look at the Brewster plan, which Michael made a point of saying uh, it, it was a plan that was interesting to look at. And, uh, some ideas could come out of it. I would agree with them. I think there's some things that they've thought of that could be useful for us. So I, recommend looking at that as well. Okay. Sure. Mr. Chairman? Uh, Dana? Uh, Dana? Yes, Dana. I just think you want to include uh, Link or at least Sean Libby on the discussion as far as beaches go in terms of trash pickup and um, the cleaning of the bathrooms. Absolutely. There's additional, uh, additional costs. And Larry, one more thing? Um, yes, please. Uh, while we're at uh, the vetting portion of this, uh, years ago we had the same discussion, I think in the early to mid 2000s, and recognizing you get a different lawyer that can give you a different opinion on the same law. Uh, with that having been said, back then they were saying that if you open the beaches, if there's an underlying liability that they're safe, that you have lifeguards and that you uh, we've assumed a certain amount of responsibility. So I would love to hear what the current thinking is from KP law about opening the beach without a lifeguard. Yeah. Well, sounds like directionally between that and, and all the health safe distancing, there, 
we're sort of already marching in that direction. But the reason I raised, I think others, I'd like to know the facts behind it, see where we are. Larry? Uh, Ed? Yes, well, to follow up on Don's question, um, if we don't, quote, open the beaches, i.e. staff them and charge uh, a parking permit fee and, and all of that, um, and we know people are still going to be at the beaches, which is essentially our public, our public facilities, what responsibility do we have to monitor, to monitor them and to keep people from, to keep, make sure people are respecting the social distancing aspects? Um, you know, because if we're going to be responsible for that, then, uh, you know, we then are what, staffing them with police officers to do that or we take the tact of completely shutting the beaches down and keeping everybody off of it. If we're going to be held responsible for uh, maintaining social distance protocol. That's exactly what I was saying that I wanted to check out with the lawyer because ultimately what kind of legal responsibilities do we have if we're charging for a permit but we don't provide a lifeguard, for instance. Uh, Bill? Yep. We've raised a, uh, a few questions tonight, some more items. When would you feel comfortable bringing this back with uh, more of a definitive agenda item? Uh, my question is, is that simply on seasonal staffing and beach access? <laughs> That's one of them. Just stick it. We can, yes. We can have other items that we go forward, but just narrow it down and answer one question at a time, I think. Larry? Michael? Yeah, just, to, just to Joe's point, I think just to make sure we add in um, Dana DeCosta's comments about talking to Link and, or Sean Libby about what the costs would be uh, to keep the restrooms clean and the beaches clean. Um, yeah, if, if, there's one, if there's one message we could. Uh, maybe get across tonight uh, to the public, you know, there's often a lot of uh, misinformation posted on social media or even not written correctly in the paper, but, and a lot of towns have taken heat for this. Uh, I, the sense that I'm getting is this board of selectmen is not talking about closing our beaches for the summer. Is that correct? We are not. That's, we are not. No. Uh, no. For me, I don't, I don't hear anyone saying that. Absolutely. Okay, because I think it's important that we continue to welcome, um, obviously in a safe way, welcome our second homeowners and, and keep keep the uh, thought that the town of Howard is going to do everything that we can do to safely provide services for people that want to visit and keep our businesses going. I can only well, add to agree with you, Michael. Okay, uh, Joe, I'm uh, getting back to uh, some type of uh, couple of weeks or what what do you have in mind no i think that to do a thorough job i'd say march excuse me may 18th uh, we're already build, building a full agenda for for next monday okay all right yes is that uh, ed yeah well and uh, you know to the extent that we've had the discussion tonight it's basically only centered on seasonal employees and beaches um you know we we do have other recreational facilities um that uh, uh we hire seasonal employees for too um and i think you know we need to have that discussion about whether um we're, we're going to allow the uh, uh various uh, um racket, you know, uh, tennis and pickleball courts to reopen. Um, and, and how, if we do that, if whether we're going to be offering any staffing for instruction. I and then the, uh, the other whole area of seasonal employment is, is in the maintenance area, which, uh, you know, uh, some maintenance you can put off, but other maintenance you put off, we uh, the next year comes and, 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 and bites you. 
The direction I was, uh, I think, uh, trying to go to was is that uh, we treat those as several different discussions. So we can focus on one item at a time, even though they're all important. It gets more confusing if we try to lump it all into and say just one seasonal activity. So my, I guess my question is, and when are when are we scheduling those discussions? Is it going to be I'll, I'll after, leave that to Joe. you know, at the end of May? We could add uh, general discussion points like we have tonight uh, for next week if the board wants to do that. Otherwise, if the board is looking for more concrete information, um, I think we have to give our appropriate staff adequate time to respond to COVID as they're doing regular, uh, presently and try to uh, analyze what we could do going forward. So um, we, we could I would like to come it. back with a more concrete, even if it takes a little longer at this point. Okay. Larry. Michael. Um, it, just to Ed's point, um, you know, the, the agenda tonight does say seasonal staffing, and I and I think it did, uh, it, certainly for me, it, it, it was going to be a much broader discussion, and I think for direction for the town administrator, it would be a, a more broad, a, a much broader discussion. With that said, not having a plan from anybody or a suggestion from anybody um, other than Beach, I think I would, I would ask that we put some urgency on this given that this is a major financial issue for the town of Harwich and a revenue, a potential revenue loss tied to people making plans on whether or not they're going to come back to work for the town of Harwich or not, or seek other employment. I would ask that um, the board put some emphasis on timing on this and make this a priority if at all possible and not wait weeks, because I think we need to make some, uh, some, some decisions. And it sounds to me at least, like Eric Beebe did some work uh, and had a lot of the answers and a lot of the plans. So I, I don't think, um, you know, other than some meetings with Joe, I think if the appropriate staff, as Joe just mentioned, put together what their plans were, put together what the costs of these hires would be with recommendations, knowing that they should be trying everything they can do to save the town some money at this point. But the major point is to get the, uh, put some emphasis to get some plans before the board as soon as possible so we can make some decisions and not talk about this for months as we as we normally or tend to talk about things. If I may, uh, let me uh, uh, emphasize the urgency and then uh, turn it back to Joe and have him come back to us with a schedule when he can bring this back to us. Is that Larry, agreeable, Joe, and everyone? Thank you. Yeah, it's all part of the mix of this. In the future, call this. Yes, Joe. So, uh, first, I just want to go back to the agenda. When I uh, put down seasonal staffing, it was whether or not we were going to be even considering hiring seasonal staff for the remainder of fiscal year 20, given what we know about the financial state and what we expect to be a difficult fiscal year 21. Secondly, it was a discussion on beach access, which I think the board has gotten into more, more directly. The third one that was beach uh, sticker and sales, a uh, beach fee and sales. And that was, um, I was hoping to get into a more uh, definitive discussion of that this evening, because if I, if I recall correctly, and if you'll bear with me, this is, um, this is an area that I have not gone through with you all here in the town of Harwich. This is my first go around with your beach season. Um, I do know that it takes about three weeks to get the stickers ordered and the, and the quantities that we want. So if the board would be looking to do restrictions on day passes or things like that, staff would, we'd want to know that sooner rather than later so that we can order the stickers, have them in place, and then talk about how we're going to sell them um, or how we may be able to sell them in a COVID world. Uh, in other words, we may not be able to have people come back in yet, but we do need to have the board talk about beach, ficker, uh, beach fee, beach sticker fee, beach sticker sales, because it's a timeliness coming up in the next, uh, if the season opens June 27th, if I remember correctly, uh, hearing staff say that the sales would have been no later than June 15th. Um, I also was told that the that discussion on stickers ties back to the later discussion this evening on disposal fees. 
Um, so that's why I wanted to put those all out there tonight. So first, seasonal staffing, it was to get a sense from the board if you thought we could proceed with the hiring of seasonal staff. I know we don't have a definitive answer tonight, but I've gotten some helpful input from the board. You've given some good input on the beach access, but I'd like to then get to the next topics. Yeah, Joel, just on the first, uh, my sense is listening to the other uh, uh, board members is, is that we're for moving on seasonal staffing, but after uh, with consideration of limiting as much as we can to get the job done. Uh, beach access, we, we talked about. Uh, I, I have a difficulty, uh, Don, banning uh, day passes for some of the reasons we discussed. I think that may not do us much good as possible as, as we would hope. Uh, people, you know, people coming. The uh, the sticker sales. Uh, Joe, are you uh, you want are you trying to drive a discussion on whether we want to raise those uh, prices, the the uh, sticker prices? No. Not at all. No, we, I was we can't do that here. Right, and what I was trying to get to is just as the board said, the Selectman McCaskill asked a question, and I think I heard consensus of the board, which is very helpful, that the board continues on uh, plans on having the bases continue to be open, and so that that is helpful on your beach access conversation. So it's going to guide staff as to how many stickers we need if there's no expected changes to eligibility for stickers. And I don't believe I heard that there was going to be. Right. Okay. Uh, Larry? Emily? Uh, Larry? Uh, uh, Michael is right. Uh, yeah, Michael is absolutely right, though. Uh, the two moving parts here are not just the lead time to ordering the stickers, but also making absolutely certain that we have a commitment from the part-time workers who would be uh, doing the jobs and that we fulfill that commitment. So, I mean, we pretty much have to make a decision pretty soon so that we can act in good faith. Right. Agreed. Larry? Uh, the uh, Michael? Oh, Dana, Dana DeCosta. Dana, uh, Dana, go ahead. Uh, the only Dana? other comment I would make is uh, just the timing of everything. If, if you slide too much instead of uh, June 30th, um, you're into July, that changes. Um, what no, we're, we're not going to do that. Okay, and when you start selling them, I mean. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna move right away. I think on that. Uh, Michael, did you? Uh, have yeah, another comment? I'm, uh, yeah, I'm actually prepared to make a motion, but I think I would look to uh, Eric Beebe uh, for some direction or Joe Powers. Uh, but I'm gonna move, uh, and, and this is not the motion yet. But I'm gonna move to approve the beach fees and sticker sales as it was done last year, just so that we can get the stickers ordered. In the end. We're going to order beach stickers, and we may as well get on that to Joe's point. And we are going to sell beach stickers. Um, it's a matter, I guess, of how many we think we're going to sell. And, and not knowing the cost of the beach stickers, I'm not sure that we shouldn't just do exactly what we did last year. And if we don't sell them all, then we don't sell them all. But in the general scheme of things, I don't think we're going to be wasting too much money. But I think that we should take an action and order the beach stickers. And, and not continue to talk about that. We're not going to raise the fees, I think, is what I just heard. And we've had no presentation to raise the fees. And I don't think it's a good year to raise the fees. Um, but why not just order the beach tickets? Michael, I'll take that as a motion. Is there a second? Second. second. I, I would second it. OK, we have, I think Michael made the motion and seconded to move ahead on the beach stickers uh, following last year's uh, program. Other discussions? Yeah, Larry, stop. Uh, does this motion, I mean, I, I'm going to get outvoted in it anyway, but I mean, is this motion inextricably tied this to we're going to go ahead and do daily stickers? I mean, because I'd be willing to vote to order the stickers, but I would like to be on record as not being in favor of the day passes. I read this motion is not distinguishing between uh, weekly passes and day passes. So uh, I think you have to be, uh, we'll see how the vote goes. Just so I can, uh, just, just so I can uh, comment because I made the motion. I, I um, you know, I, I do share some of Don's concerns, but I think the, the other argument that was made earlier outweighs that argument. And, and I think we're, we're uh, I think we'd be guessing to think people would just be showing up for the day to buy beach stickers. 
and not people that are just planning their vacations based on already having time here. So I don't know how, Don, we would monitor that or weigh that out. But for me, it's more of a mechanism of getting the beach tickets ordered so that we can start selling them and not lose this revenue, knowing that we are going to be using in the beaches at some level. And we certainly could come back later and have a conversation or a debate about daily passes outside of this conversation and vote. Uh, but I certainly think that that's a conversation that as we see how COVID-19 goes and, and how bad things are, we could certainly come back and say that we're not going to sell daily passes if that's a topic a board member wanted to bring up. But for yeah, now, the most includes it. I think everybody's reaching to this. Uh, all I'm saying is that this, if we can have another conversation, even if I get outvoted, I don't care. But if uh, there was something I could go on record for, if this is just simply order the stickers at the same rates as last year, I'd be more than willing to support it. And, and I'd say as the person that made the motion, I'd be willing to have another conversation about it. At this point, I, I do support daily passes, but I'd certainly be willing to have another conversation. Okay, great. We can bring that discussion right. uh, Who is it? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, that's the... Um, in second, my seconding, it was based on my feeling the intent was to get the stickers ordered and that there is still a lot of detail uh, on exactly how we will, this will all work out and which uh, will be presented to us uh, a week or two or three from now to, to do a final approval on. Um, I think we've asked uh, Eric to be, to uh, provide us some additional information on 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 how this is all going to work, and at that point, if you know we get this sense that maybe daily six stickers aren't a good idea, we can uh, put that into effect then. But uh, um, my sense was just to. to this motion was the general sense that we are heading towards having the beaches open this summer, that they will be staffed and that we will uh, sell permits, uh, parking permits um, to, to finance the operation. Thank you, Ed and Michael. That's all I wanted to hear. We've had a uh, motion and a second. Uh, no further discussion. I'll take a roll call vote. Uh, Steve, I'll start with you. Aye. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. Don? Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, Joe, what else do we need to do for this uh, part of the agenda? Thank you. I appreciate the board's direction on that, and um, we'll work with staff to get more detailed information on the other topics. At this point, it would uh, come down to item number four, which is disposal fees and uh, we have our DPW director on the phone and you have his um, memorandum recommending um, a fee structure for fiscal year 21. So at this point, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to turn it over to our uh, DPW director. Uh, Link, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, members of the board. I have the dubious honor of uh, making a fee recommendation to you this evening that I really truly wish I did not have to do given the uh, COVID-19 crisis. That said, I'm recommending increasing residential disposal area stickers by $20 um, per sticker. Back up a second, $20 per permit since we did away with the stickers uh, several years ago. Um, that $20 is, uh, I've crunched numbers every which way I can. It represents the very least amount I think we can and then come out in a break-even scenario, which the whole operation is. Um, they have, we have not had to raise residential sticker prices since the last time we had a new contract five years ago. Um, so this is the first increase I've had to recommend to you in, in five years. A very simple, I, I provided a lot of data uh, in, um, for the disposal area operations that I'd be happy to get into, but a very simple simple way to look at this or to frame this uh, request for your consideration to raise it is this. The average household produces 1.25 tons of trash. 
we experienced a $30 increase in our cost of disposal um, last January 1st. You know, you said we, we went from paying $60 a ton to paying $90 a ton. If you extrapolate that math out, it should be somewhere in the neighborhood of $37, whatever. Our commercial business has been strong and somewhat offsets uh, the request. So I, I hope you consider increasing the, the uh, residential sticker fee, residential permit fee, I'm sorry, uh, by $20. I also requested to raise the non-resident by the same margin we've maintained since we incorporated that by $20 from 80 to 200 and to increase the recycle only sticker uh, from $20 to $50. Now that may sound counterintuitive to everyone, um, such a steep increase. However, the recycle markets have been in absolute turmoil for the last year and a half, two years, or so forth. Even at 50, that does not break even on providing those services. It is um, the recycle markets. I, I've been working for the town. I started at the disposal area in 91. I have never seen the recycle markets as depressed as they are now. Um, so it is a it is a um, expense. We're mandated to recycle. We're, I mean, we're mandated to offer those services by, by DEP, Department of Environmental Protection, on waste ban items. Um, and we have done that. You probably, if you've been to the disposal area, we saw that with the COVID-19 crisis, we instituted some single stream, which is expensive. It costs nearly as much as trash, or, or does cost as much as uh, trash um, to recycle. My hope is as soon as we get back to some semblance of normal to resume the source separating and at least we can maximize our return on those commodities or at least pay, pay less um, for the privilege of recycling. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, you may have. Thank you, Link. Um, questions for Link? Uh, Larry, I guess I'll start. Um, First and foremost, uh, we did. We, we as a board received an email today from Craig Chadwick, uh, and it was an email reminding me basically to thank Link Hooper and his entire staff at the DPW for the outstanding job that they're doing running the dump during this crisis. Um, the staff has, has uh, embraced the change, uh, very uh, good directions, uh, great job keeping people apart, and just overall. Uh, there's been several comments about the dump and how well the dump's being handled and what a great job you're doing. Um, so thank you, Link, and please thank your entire staff at the dump. Um, that's my positive comments. Um, <laughs> thank you. So I led with that tonight, which is different from normal, I think. Uh, as, far, as far as the uh, dump increase goes, Link, I, I won't support it. Um, I certainly would support the recycling, and I think you made a great case for the recycling. As far as the, the dump operation goes, I think it's a much broader conversation for the Board of Selectmen and it's a budget conversation. Uh, in the initial budget, we were, we were presented with a $500,000 savings roughly by closing the dump today's week. And I believe a conversation um, happened between you, Joe and Carol, and it was decided that some other cuts were made instead. And the board never really got back to that. And I'm, I'm, a fan of closing the dump one day a week, uh, maybe two days a week, but I'm, I'm really a fan of getting an independent study done of some of the numbers that you've provided. And in past conversations, like we've talked about um, taking other people's trash and the benefit to taking other towns trash and commercial uh, MSW. And I don't see the benefit to it because in the end, we're bringing in 500,000 to spend 500,000. The only question I think I had tonight, um, and, and I'm not going to support it again based on the numbers that I've seen so far, and I, and I certainly think that I, or hope that the board takes up the potential of closing the dump a day or two a week and maybe starting to just take care of the residents of town of Harwich and see what our dump fees would be then and what our operation would look like without buying extra trailers and trucks and being a trucking operation as you've um, pointed out in the past or or being in a full cost recovery mode. So I don't think tonight is the time to really get in a debate about that. What were your fuel cost savings 
or what, what are your projected fuel cost savings and where are those show in your spreadsheet um, along, with, um, along with any other savings that are coming from this year, from not taking in as much trash uh, and being closed to commercial for the times that we were. With the, with the understanding that I know that you've said in the past that it was at a slow time. I've never been to the dump at a slow time. We were always taking commercial commercial trash. So can you tell me what the fuel savings are and what the savings have been since we had to shut down taking commercial trash? I believe he's sorry about that. Um, You're gonna make my dogs bark. Um, <laughs> yes. So I provided Carol some uh, some positive information today um, um, about disposal air operations, projected revenue, and expenses. On the expense side, we're pro we're we're, we're going to meet budget and probably be a hundred or two under on the expense side for a plethora of reasons. On the revenue side, um, we're not that short. I, I'm probably going to end up the year. Um, being 100 to 200 off of where we were. NSW was down, and I'm doing this from memory, so, so uh, please forgive me if it's off a little, but the MSW revenue was down like $350,000. The C&D revenue was up $150,000. Business has been very, very strong and robust. Um, that business, because the way I allocate things is, is my feeling, and I have this discussion, um, I, I, I'd love to have this discussion, um, that we are essentially, the commercial business is offsetting the cost to the residents. If you look at the spreadsheet where I had uh, FY21 surrounding community disposal area costs, the only community in there that I'm aware of that covers 100% of their costs because they have an enterprise fund is Town of Bostable. This stick is two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, I have I have the information, the spreadsheets I provided you. I try to emulate as though we were an enterprise fund and covering all those costs. If we stop doing some of those functions, and I know tonight's not the uh, the time for this discussion, um, but if we stop doing that, some some of these functions, you're shifting costs onto the residents. And I, I hope we don't embark down that. I have uh, the information you just requested, Selectman McCaskill, um, I have ready uh, to go um, and, and to send to the board or Joe or whomever would like um, to read it. And in both narratives about closing the dump and the financial impact of doing that, as well as the financial, the, all, the, the finances of the entire disposal area. So the revenue, short answer is expenses are down a little bit, 100 or two, um, and revenue's down 100 or two. Um, and it's just been going, it's been going strong. Um, we did shut the C&D down for a week, um, which I re regretted having to do. And there was quite the backlog and uh, excitement when we opened that back up a week later. Other questions for Link? Um, Larry, uh, Steve uh, Ward. Steve? Yeah, um, maybe we would, uh, it would behoove us to um, take a look at what Link has put together, as Michael has requested, um, and then make a vote on this, rather than, uh, you know, push Michael away from this vote because he doesn't have the information that he wants. Um, you do, I mean, Link, do you, and I'll ask this question to Link, do you need this vote tonight or can we uh, delay this uh, for another week or so uh, so that we can take a look at the other background information you've obtained that would address the concerns that Michael has brought up? Uh Selectman so Ford, I, I don't need the vote um, at any time. Uh, quite frankly, the $20 increase and the other increases in here are very um, minor compared to the operation as a whole. Um, yeah. in, in that, you know, it's, it's roughly a, a $3.4 million operation. Um, and we're generating um, 120,000, 130,000 uh, if, if you voted all three items tonight. 
So it's a small item. We only really need to have a vote of the board prior to the first Monday in June when stickers typically go on sale, which I believe is 8th or something like that. So it's oh. somewhere in yeah. June. So we have a week. Larry, Larry um, if I could again, uh, um, I, well, I would suggest we do that because I do think that, um, you know, we, it, you know, it's been pointed out a couple of times, both by Michael and Dawn, that the, some of the information we need to make some of these decisions, we don't have right in front of us while we're trying to do it. So I think it would be a good idea if we could take a look at what Link has. And, you know, I want to add on to what Michael said and, and also the email that we received that not only has the DPW done a spectacular job relative to the COVID situation, but when you take a look at all of the various, you know, emergency we, uh, emergencies we've had in this town uh, that they've responded to, not the least of which was the tornado, uh, we have a spectacular department here who is working extraordinarily hard. I mean, Link is trying to put forward the numbers that we need in order to make, you know, good comprehensive decisions relative to whether we raise fees, how we deal with the, uh, you know, the employees there and so forth and so on. So, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, another week or so, uh, I mean, I'm ready to support Lincoln this because I've had a lot of conversations with him in the past about other things and I have good confidence in the numbers that he shows us. But I think everybody has a reason and a right to ask for the numbers that they want to look at in order to make these decisions. So I would suggest we wait a week or so, whatever amount of time it takes to analyze the data and then come back. Thank you, Steve. Anyone else have a comment, question? I think Chair, I have uh, one. Uh, last comment, if I may, Larry. Okay. Thank, uh, thank you, Stephen, for the delay, and I, and I would look forward to looking at the numbers. Um, the only other comment I have is based on the um, uh, public hearing on a fee increase, and, and maybe Joe can answer this. Um, do we have to have a public hearing, uh, given, what, given where we're at, and how are we going to get this uh, proposed increase out to the public for their comment? I admit I have no information on that tonight, but I'll have it for tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Link, I have one. Uh, uh, go ahead, Link. Um, I, I, I just had uh, one comment. On page three of the information I um, provided you, the FY21 full cost of carrying analysis disposal area services. I'd like to point out that I have all the direct costs on a budget in there. I also carry a lot of uh, things that are indirect costs such as capital, uh, capital equipment depreciation. I'm talking things that are not necessarily in the DPW budget. Um, you know, uh, salaries allocated from other DPW personnel. So I carry uh, administrative salaries, vehicle maintenance salaries, carry 45% uh, for fringe benefits of all the full-time employees there. So I've, I've captured or attempted to capture all the costs that I could imagine of um, and provide you that information. And everything it takes to run the disposal area, cost-wise, I believe, is it contained in that in that spreadsheet? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Larry. Larry. Uh, just, just, a, just, yep, just a response. So we're not going on any wild goose chases, and so that I'm not wasting anyone time, anyone's time, or any more of the board's time tonight. Uh, Link, I, I see what you have in there, uh, and I think that this conversation probably needs to extend to you and Carol and I. Uh, because I want to know things like if we don't have the amount of tractor trailers that we have, and if we don't have the amount of tractor trailer bodies that we have, and if we don't have the carrying costs of being open seven days a week. So I want to dive into the weeds a little bit. I appreciate the amount of detail you put into your reports, but rather than go through the debate tonight with the entire board, if they, if they don't want to have it, I would uh, shoot an email to you tomorrow or the next day uh, and, and copy Carol in, with some of my questions and concerns, and then maybe we can, uh, maybe I'll have a better understanding when we bring it back as Stephen suggested. Okay, uh, uh, Link. Uh, Suckman and Casco, I'd be happy to meet with you and run through the numbers at, at, at your convenience. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. I want to ask, uh, after the meeting, uh, that, you, that you put that in writing so we're all aware of what the numbers are. 
Link, I have one uh, uh, question that was emailed to me, and that was, uh, or the suggestion was that we should uh, increase the price for non-resident stickers more than shown to give a better benefit to uh, town residents in, in use of the dump, their landfill, excuse me. Were you looking the, the, the criticism was that there's not much of a spread between the price of stickers for non-residents and residents, and that spread should be larger to give a better, a greater benefit to town residents over non-residents. If you, uh, I defer to the board obviously on that. I will say it's a very low volume item. We sell 145 of them annually. Okay. Uh -huh. I think you've answered that question. Well, well relative to we sell about 5,200 primary stickers. So yeah. it's very okay. small. Right. Okay. Anyone else have a comment? If not, uh, Joe and Lincoln, uh, would you better would you be ready a week from today? We can be. Because the 18th is the day that you have a lot scheduled, right? So correct. We could get this uh, have this done by Monday, which means you get to need, means we need to get it done by Wednesday, you get it in the packet. Is that affirmative? Yeah, I, I have um, uh, two memos and supporting uh, information that I already prepared about a, uh, after the budget hearing. So it, it's been ready to go. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll look forward to that. Any other? Discussion if we'll bring this back then. Moving on then to uh, old business, and that's discussion of the uh, uh, town warrant. And I think the discussion now is is uh, Scott, you're on there. Are we missing public forum or something? No, sir. Uh, but I did want to mention that. Uh, Patrick Otten did reach out to me and did want to speak during this uh, this period. So if you're okay while you start, I'll open the lines up and invite him to dial in. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'm suggesting that uh, we look at the town warrant because uh, I think the direction we're all uh, comfortable with is that we're going to have to limit the uh, town warrant this year uh, primarily to those budgetary items that are critical and a few of the other items that uh, are also critical. And as I said one time, uh, which I probably overuse that term, but uh, we don't want uh, a long discussion. I think the way to go after this, if you will, is I have the town, uh, the warrant in front of me with the uh, different categories. If we could go through, if you're comfortable with this, we could vote on some of these and to put in the town warrant tonight. And we could do those by categories. For instance, we could start with the town officers and committees, articles one, two, and three. Is there agreement that those should go on the town warrant? Joe? Larry, just from a procedural standpoint, given that this is the warrant that the board had been working on prior to COVID-19, I think it's appropriate that the board take votes to remove items. Right. Well, and that's a good point. Let me just, uh, let me continue on that then. We're not, my suggestion is we don't remove any, we leave on articles one, two, and three of the town officers. Joe, is that the criteria you wish? Correct. I'll uh, start and let people chime in. The, uh, uh, the next category is budget. And for at least my read of this, the item that I think we should remove is Article 8. What is Article 8? It's wastewater and sewer department budget. Um. I said, Larry, it, has has the warrant been sent to us recently so I can open it? It is. Yeah. Uh, you should have it both as a PDF and as a, uh, uh, yeah, you should have that. In. 
Okay, let me see if I can find it. Any other comments on that? This is I have a comment. It's Carol. Carol, please. Hi, good evening. Um, so the wastewater budget was developed based on the intermunicipal agreement with the town of Chatham, as you're aware. Um, part of that budget is being uh, funded from taxpayers and part of that budget is being funded from free cash. A large portion of the budget is being funded from free cash. Free cash expires June 30th. Um, if the sewer system is to come up and to play um, in FY21, which I um, have been told that that is the schedule, free cash, just so that you're aware, free cash expires June 30th. So it has to be recertified and it would have to be recertified prior to a file town meeting. So you're saying, uh, Carol, that this should be uh, postponed be for that reason as well as, is that what you're, you read on that? I'm just cautioning the board. Um, just, I don't know if you are going to have a fall town meeting. Um, I don't know the circumstances around that, surrounding that. Um, I just wanted to caution you in that you have some funding requirements from the town of Chatham um, that you will need to adhere to if um, if the sewer flow begins, which is estimated somewhere around October, or no, beginning of November, um, that if you have your fall town meeting and at your fall town meeting, if free cash has not been certified yet, typically it's certified in September, um, but if you do not and you are funding a portion of it with with free cash that you will not have that available free cash unless it's already been certified. So the other suggestion that came from the water superintendent was to reduce that dollar amount by, I believe it was $50,000, um, which is something else that you could do. And that would cover our IMA obligations and delay some of the other uh, administrative uh, charges going forward is that right carol that is correct okay but you'd still need the article. comments you'd still need the article then if you're going to tinker with it we're still going to need the article right. then we can reduce it as a right. motion okay so the consensus is to leave that article in larry yeah. michael uh, uh, the, the consensus for me on that one at least would be to leave that article in, but I guess I got a broader question, which I said I was going to wait, uh, but I can't wait at this point. Joe, do you know how many towns on the Cape have just made the decision not to have a town meeting until the fall and not to guess that we're going to be okay to put 175 people-ish in a room? Because I, I'm at this point viewing this as a uh, public safety hazards that we're about to vote on. So, and, and of course, my own thoughts, but has any other town that you know of voted to postpone their Springtown meeting until fall? Um, I'm not aware of any, but I can ask the group uh, tomorrow and report uh, back out. Hey, Larry? Steve, Steve uh, in, in response to Michael, I, Michael, I don't think that we're allowed to make a vote like that until we arrive at the June date or near the June date. I think there's some statutory limitation on us relative to extending town meeting beyond uh, the June date. Uh, I could be stand corrected, but I think there's something, Michael, that causes us not to do anything now. We'd have to check that out. And Joe, I think you, re I asked that question before and I think that was your response, but could you, uh, May go into that a bit more? Yes, thank you. Uh, and Selectman Ford's on the right path. Um, because the board took the affirmative action uh, of canceling your May 4th town meeting and specifically rescheduling till a date certain, the statutes that are in place now, and we know of no effort to correct those or change those, I should say, 
is that the only other course of action that this board could take relative to its town meeting would be to push that next date out to a period no greater than 30 days from its date. So if we didn't do a town meeting on June 22nd, the board couldn't postpone it beyond July 22nd. Look, Larry? Yeah, Michael, I think, I, yeah. yeah. Just to follow up to that uh, to that comment, is Joe? I have two questions. Is that because we voted to change the May meeting to June twenty second, or is that just a rule in your opinion? No, it's a statute, and it's because the board uh, postponed or, or yeah postponed their present meeting to a date certain. Um, okay. If you recall, that. council's direct um, or council's memo, if the board had uh, canceled the May 4th meeting, but not taken any other action, we might have had an opportunity to go beyond the, the date in question. Okay. I do know that, I do know that, uh, or, or I'm under, I, I think I know that the board chairs and the Cape managers are meeting on Friday. Is that, do we know anything about that? No, that's correct. Uh, Ed, you okay. got that, but that's and then, and then I, I guess I, I would say that at least one town on the Cape has decided that they're not going to have their meeting until into September. And, and, you know, it, I guess it really is, uh, I'll go through this exercise, but at this point, I really don't believe that we're going, I believe this exercise is a, is, is I guess worthy if we have to plan for a town, town meeting, but I think if this board could now at least hear the benefits of not or other benefits or, or uh, opposition as to why we shouldn't postpone it until September. I'd like to hear them because at this point, I don't see how we in good faith should continue to navigate down this path. If there's a way out of it, thinking that we're going to put 175 plus people to vote on things in a room. I, I just don't see it happening. Uh, Larry, if I might. I was just going to say, it makes life a lot easier if we can postpone this for a few more months. Larry? Steve? L Larry? Yeah. Yes, um, it, it, it certainly appears, uh, based on the Senate state Senate's action in the last week, uh, that we may very well have the ability to reduce the quorum. So that is another consideration we, we may want to look at, which we had a slight discussion about last week. Um, and the intent of the legislature is to allow towns to reduce their quorum to 10% of the normal, which would be quite minimal in our case, because we only have 150 as our quorum. Um, you know, I, I, in some ways, I think we should take advantage of it simply to get our budget uh, defined for the coming year. Uh, to some degree. I mean, I, I, the whole point that Larry, I believe you've had reaching out to the selectmen is that the most important component of the warrant will be the budget issues. And I agree with you on that. And all, almost all the towns that have been trying to address this issue are doing the same thing. I don't think most towns find it very attractive to continue to fund the town at 112th, 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 112th. So, uh, you know, I, I, there's still a possibility here that there would be a town meeting that would meet a quorum guidance provided to us by the Commonwealth, the legislature, uh, that we could at least get in place some semblance of a budget for the coming year. And I'll comment that that legislation, and I read it, uh, if we go through as is the draft specifically limits us to very just what we're talking about tonight, basically budgetary right. items. Larry, Correct. it's Don. Uh, Don, I, I, I get what everybody's saying. Although uh, I, I, I really kind of leaning more towards Michael in the overall about uh, throwing 150 people in the room, and I'm going to repeat what I said the last time. Uh, you can establish a quorum at 15, but you can't turn away people. So to presuppose that 
we're going to bank on 15 or 20 people showing up and we can get this done and move along that would make Michael's fears a little bit uh, diminished. I don't see that happening. Second of all, one of the reasons I don't see that happening is when the public understands that the Board of Selectmen, the FinCom, and administration in this town gets you past the quorum by themselves without it as citizens and residents, uh, I guarantee you there's going to be people who are going to want to be part of that process so that they don't feel like the, it's somewhat rigged. Larry? Larry? Steve Ford. Steve. Um, and, and that's why last week, um, if we were all listening to each other, uh, I suggested that we look at the venues that we potentially could use. Uh, the moderator suggested to me that I suggest to all of you, which I did last week, uh, that we look at potentially using the high school. Uh, because there, even if we had the kind of turnout you're talking about, Don, we could do the kind of social distancing that we would need to do in order to both address the COVID situation as well as have our town meeting. The town clerk and I talked after that meeting and at the infamous uh, post override uh, special meeting uh, in 2005, we had upwards of 1400 people that were spread out over the community center. If you took 150 or 200 people and spread them out in that same manner with uh, people running to get votes in the uh, activities room and maybe other places along with the gym, I'm sure we could handle it probably in the same manner as the school. My bigger concern, uh, especially living with someone who comes home from the hospital every day having worked there, is you're talking about this, whether you're talking about the school or the community center, Michael's got a point. There's, uh, you're getting recycled, recirculated air within the cube of the building, and it doesn't really matter whether you're in four rooms or one room, it's still the same deal. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> I think it, I think it came going a little too far on it, but anyway. I would have thought that two months ago myself, Stephen. I agree with you. Larry, if I may, uh, ahead, I, just, because I, just because I brought it up, I'm fine with going through and, and at least doing a preliminary round of what we should take out just so that we get to that point. Just as Stephen's point on the high school, I'm not sure that, Stephen, it, it's, um, I've been in that space I'm not sure that we gain a whole lot going to Monomoy versus the community center gym. Both spaces look about equal. And if you're talking about the auditorium, unless we have people in there saying that the middle, middle seat has to seat first. And then I don't even know the logistics of it, to be honest with you, Stephen. I would look at anything. I just don't see the difference. What I'd like to do is to uh, move ahead with this okay. and keep Larry. and we'll add. Yeah, um, can, can somebody tell me what date this was sent to us? Because I've opened up everything that I've gotten in email and I can't find it anywhere. I'll resend. Uh, could you do that, Joe? I, yep. uh, I'd have to turn over. If we can uh, uh, go through this exercise and we can keep our options open, if there's a way to delay it, uh, going forward, we'll be we'll have both options and happening. But I would like to get prepared. Okay, if we move to the uh, next section, is a uh, capital plan. Uh, the two items that I uh, let me remind you, I'm just throwing these out for your discussion points. The two items that I uh, threw out on this was uh, Article 11, which is a facility maintenance repair fund, and the uh, fire department quint. Uh, talking to the uh, fire department, if they they really uh, believe that the uh, ambulance is a critical purchase for them, they could hold off on the quint. Is what I'm told. So, those are the two items I'm suggesting that we uh, throw out of the capital plan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I had mentioned last week that I've asked the department heads uh, to respond on, uh, as of Thursday of last week. They have, I'm still collating their responses to be able to articulate where departments are making suggestions and are, um, or are asking requests. So 
I need a little more time to collate that if I could, please. Okay, I assumed we'd have that tonight, Joe, so I may have gotten ahead of you then, or you got behind me one or the other. I'm, I'm what do you want to do on that? I think it's worthy of a discussion, but I just wanted the board to know that we'll also have recommendations or items from staff uh, weighing in on that. I think it's appropriate for the department heads that um, have that capital request that they be offered the opportunity to add narrative they have. I'd like to get that to the board. I don't see any reason why the board can't continue on conversation without taking specific action. Larry. Yeah, I'm a little I'm a little disappointed in that, but we'll move ahead, Michael. Yeah, I would I would say that maybe we bring the capital plan back with those recommendations. I mean, I, there's some other things on there. I think at this point on the capital plan and articles, if it's not absolutely critical, we should be removing them. And I would say any trucks we can remove from any department, anything that's not proven to be absolutely critical, we should be removing. I I agree with that, and. Uh, uh, that was my intent and my suggestions, but uh, so Joe, where are we then? You want to bring this whole thing back? Is that where we are? No, what I'm suggesting is that as the board identify, I'm not, I'd ask the board to not take any uh, formal action to remove anything uh, regarding plan, uh, capital. I think there's a pro process that needs to involve the outlay committee and the narrative from the d department heads. So. What the no, I agree with that. I just, yeah, I agree with that. I just thought we were, we were getting there, but uh, um, we'll come back. Yep. Larry, this yeah. is Don again. How about Don, if we just try to, how about if we just try to go for the low hanging fruit here? Uh, okay, like, I'll go through. That's a good okay. idea. Let me go through the administration then. We know we're not going to do that. Right. So if I go through the, uh, the, Good point, Don. Let me just go through the, the other part of that. The administration, this is a little mix up because the uh, uh, table of contents doesn't agree with the body of the uh, the Warren article, which makes it a little confusing. Well, but I would eliminate uh, Article 15, which shows up on the uh, uh, S14 on the, uh, I would uh, not take on the uh, DHY Queen Water Community Partnership. Why don't I move? Uh, to, why don't I move to remove that particular article then? Okay, I, I would, I would go ahead. Is there, is there a second? I second it, Michael. Can I just ask? I, that was all garbled on my end. I didn't catch much of that. I, I just yes, made article 15, fifteen in the body on the uh, table of contents is actually listed as fifteen. The, the, there's but it's Article 15. DHY. Which, I can't uh, see any scenario that we'd want to hold that discussion. Can I, can I just, I just want to make sure I get everything before you go forward. If you're talking Article 15, that would be page 17 of the warrant book that was included in the packet. Is that correct? Right. Let's see here. I'm scrolling down. Um, yes, Article 15. 17 is correct. Yeah. What I'm saying, Joe, is the table of contents is, a, is not correct on these, so this I'm is sure. wrong uh, article number. I'm just using titles. It's a Dennis Harwood, Harwich Yarmouth DHY Clean Waters Community Partnership. Okay. And I move to remove that from this warrant. And Michael yes. second, uh, so there, is there a other discussion? If now, I'll take a roll call. Uh, uh, Don? Aye. Michael? Aye. Ed? Uh, aye. Steve? Aye. And I'm an aye. The next one I would suggest removing is the uh, uh, agreement between Chatham and Harwich, uh, uh, the school, Article uh, 19. The amendment to, to the agreement between the towns of Chatham and Harwich with respect to the formation of a regional school district. I, rem I move to this warrant. Again, if I can just ask, Article 19, which appears on page 19 of the draft warrant. Okay. Yes. Is that? Joe. Thank you. Yes. And I'm moving to remove it. And I'll second that. Other discussion? Yeah, Larry, uh, just one one point. Uh, Please. We need to remove it in any event, but uh, I hate to say that these guys have a modus operandi, but you know, remember the marked up 
version that we were going to get before it ever finds itself back on a warrant they, they still owe us that yeah and i think actually joel's reminding them several times so we'll <laughs> we'll do it again right another discussion we'll take a roll call vote uh ed um and that this is on article 18. article 19. okay article 19 and what i've been sent is in the is listed as a peg agreement that's that's article uh 20. the table content says 19 but your actual article is, is oh. 20 in the body of the of the report Okay. The uh, table contents is, is this section is, is incorrect. Yeah, uh, okay. sorry about that. Okay, aye. Uh, Steve? Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, and so that's passed unanimously. Uh, the other one, I, uh, next one, I, uh, Article 20, and Ed, that's 19 in the table contents to keep the confusion going. Article okay. 20, I would suggest we, uh, uh, we re remove bring that back later all right article 20 is appears at the bottom of the page there's a big uh, fund request it's, it's items that we'd like to have better uh, tv coverage but i think we can postpone it during this time okay that's on page 29. oh, oh that be correct correct yes, it's at I, the bottom of page 29. But okay um, I move to remove Article 20, the uh, PEG fund request. I'll second it. Okay. Uh, Michael uh, seconded it. Is there other discussion? I do. Uh, yep, sorry, I'll defer uh, to Michael. Uh, uh, Michael? Nope, let's start with Joe. He might answer my question. Okay, Joe, well, we'll I, start with you. I, I'd ask the board to hold off on this one. I'd like to circle back with Jamie. There's uh, She's done extraordinary work on um, uh, renegotiation with Comcast, uh, which we're hoping to get to the board uh, as early as June of this year. I just want to take the opportunity to speak with her to make sure that that's not in any way tied to it. Because one of our arguments is that this town has been um, exceedingly uh, strong in the support of uh, public education and public access. And so I just asked the board um, if your action could be tied to a discussion of staff to either confirm or revisit. Well, I know okay. we can get the low hanging fruit, so I'll remove the uh, <coughs> motion for this for the time being. I'll Hi, it's my Carol. Second. I'm sorry, it's uh, Carol. Carol? So if, if this is the correct one that I think it is, and I have the right page I think it is, it's for the school district, is that correct? Yes. Yes. The school district has asked for this to be removed. Really? That's that correct. my question. Okay, that I'll, uh, I'll reinstate my second if Don reinstates his motion. Yep. Joe, does that do it for you? Absolutely. We can always bring it back if we have to. We can, we can bring it back if we have to. Uh, okay. Other discussion? We'll go for a roll call vote. Ed? Um, I'll, I'll vote aye as long as we get a confirmation from the school district. Okay. Don? Aye. Michael? Aye. Uh, I'm an aye. Steve? Aye. Moving ahead, then uh, my next section is uh, Department of Public Works. And this is the uh, table comments is 20. It's actually article uh, 14, I believe. Uh, purchase and equip vehicles for DPW. Uh, this is one I, I suggest removing. Uh, we have a link here with us, but uh, you have a comment on that link? <coughs> Yes, Mr. Chair, as um, Mr. Powers he, um, stated, he had asked for our comments and I had said, uh, given the uh, circumstances, um, I provided narrative from each of those department managers 
um, which said you're going to be experiencing uh, more maintenance costs in the future. But I clearly said that all, all the deep articles um, could be postponed. Okay. Larry, 21 is thank you, thank you. 21 in the warrant is road maintenance program. Right. Article 14 on page 16. 14 is a purchase. Is this oh, you need to remember? According to my notes, Article 14 is purchase and equipment of vehicles for DPW. Article 21 is road maintenance program. They, that needs to be reorganized. But, oh I, move that, I move that we remove Article 14 from the warrant. Second. Done. Okay, other discussion? Thank if you. Not, I'll take, yeah, thank uh, you very much, Link. Larry, uh, Larry, as long Steve? as long as yeah, as long as 14 is purchase and equipment vehicles for DPW, because I, I mean, I've got, you know, I, what I'm looking at in front of me, that's 20 on mine. So I just want to be sure we're eliminating that. I, I don't disagree with what they're doing. I just want to be sure we're, we're, I think we're all looking at a, some different documents here. I'm looking at the one Joe sent today. So in the, the I am too, it's page 16 on the main body. I'm, I'm not looking at the uh, table of contents. It's page. Oh, well, I'm looking at, I'm looking at the table, but you know, the table of contents is, is, is table many, but that's not, that's not, that's not a correct number. There's a problem. Yeah, All right. Fine. Well, as long as Are it is, you is, just said, I'm fine. Yes. Let me make this, uh, let me uh, make this a little simpler. Can I, since Link has uh, made his comments, uh, can I have a motion to uh, remove uh, two uh, DPW articles? One is purchase and equipment vehicles for DPW, and the second is a road maintenance program. Exactly. That's our, hold on, that, hold on, that's Article 14 and Article 21, and if we're going to do it that way, I will remove my second to the last motion. Okay. Remove Article 14. All right. I move to remove Article 14 and Article 20. And I will Article second 21. that. Article 21, second. sorry. No. Okay. Any other discussion? My, my only not, question uh, is, is Larry, Larry, Larry uh, Go ahead, is, Link okay with, is Link okay with removing the road maintenance program? Uh, he said he was. Okay, I just didn't hear that. Okay. Mr. Chair, I did provide narrative um, to the acting administrator, and in that, I clearly said the couple of articles, nothing would be noticed. I did write a paragraph about the road maintenance and my concerns about that. Please recall that the road maintenance for this current fiscal year failed, um, and I believe it failed because of the nexus it had with Lower County Road. So. We really have nowhere to turn if something um, was to happen. Yes, we have chapter 90. Yes, we've essentially thrown the road maintenance plan out and no one's gonna notice that um, today or tomorrow, but there could be consequences associated with not funding the road maintenance that we're not thinking of. And, and I, I, I would hope you take a look at the narrative that I sent the acting administrator on that. Mr. Chair, if this is a low-hanging fruit, then why don't we just leave the uh, motion for Article 14 right at the moment, which is purchase of the vehicles. Uh, well, right now we have a motion and a second for both of those. So, Michael, you want to, uh, we're going back and forth here. This, uh, uh, yeah, we are. And, and not for nothing, but I, if we had the if we had these narratives and we had to index it match the warrant, we'd be, this would be much easier. I will remove yep. my second to the motion of uh, removing article 14 and 21. And I move to remove- Don, article. you wanna try again? Yeah, I, I move to simply remove article 14, which is the vehicle purchase for DPW. Thank okay. You. And I'll second, second that. Okay. We got a motion. So gentlemen, a it's Carol. Sorry. Carol. It's Carol. No, please. So we're just deferring these, correct? It's not, re it's, it may be a removal, but it's a deferral, correct? It'll be on a different warrant. It won't be on this okay. warrant. Okay. It, it removes it from, yeah. right, we'll remove it from this warrant. <laughs> Certainly, we yeah, yeah. to come back because uh, Link makes uh -huh. some uh, valid points. Okay, I'll take a roll call on this. Uh, Steve, I'll start with you. Aye. Ed. Aye. Don. 
Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we remove Article 22, Amendments and Cemetery Rules and Regulations. Not that there's anything wrong with them, but I guarantee you there's gonna be a discussion. Yeah. So if, if you're mentioning articles, could you also mention page number in the draft? Sure, it begins at the bottom of page 30. Article 22. Oh. Okay. 22, okay. Second, to the cemetery. Yeah, Michael seconded that. Other discussion? Again, it's only because it's going to incur a big conversation, not because there's no merit to it. Okay, understood. Uh, I'm an I. Don? Aye. Ed? Aye. Steve? Aye. Michael? Aye. Uh, the next article is the Memorial Trees Replacement. That's I suggest we leave that because that's funded by the cemetery uh, funds at the moment. I'd agree. I'd agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, uh, Channel 18, uh, Joel, is this one you want to get back, I think, and get discussion from Jamie? Because this, I think this is what you were referring to before. Yeah, 24 and 25. Yeah, again, and notwithstanding what the schools have said, my point is we're working with staff and council to renegotiate a contract. And I, I just want it out there as the board is doing this, that by the board not keeping these articles in, it does not equate to a lack of support for those efforts, that it is more related or it is completely related to COVID-19 and the town's desire to get through a operating budget discussion as quickly as and as safely as we can at a town meeting. So I just wanted to put that on the record for anything related to uh, the cable fund and uh, cable pro uh, channel 18. Uh, All right. can, I make, can I make a comment, Larry? Michael, please go ahead. I, I, you know, I've gotten a low hanging fruit conversation and everything else, but I've also gotten now that a few of these articles that we have brought up uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, Joe has had a uh, uh, thoughts about not bringing them up until the narratives have been written and the employees have been talked to. And I'm not sure how much further, based on the statement that we just had to make or the town administrator just had to make, I'm not sure how many more money things we should go through. And I'm not sure that we shouldn't just be presented by you and by Joe. Um, certainly a board member could disagree, but presented next week with a uh, updated warrant with the recommendations of removal after they've been vetted by the employees and do this a little bit more professionally uh, with a matching index. We took action on some of these. Uh, I'm certainly willing to work with Joe and uh, Carol to uh, bring us back with more definitive uh, listing that uh, with the correction of the table of contents, for instance, and more streamlined discussion if that, if that makes sense. Larry, it's Don again. Don? I agree with Michael, but there still are things that we could deal with. And uh, you know, I know I'm going to get lacerated uh, by Charlene and uh, by Anita, but the, uh, the, the, the things that have to do with bylaws and uh, amending uh, well, like amending zoning or whatever, while they may have merit, and while I understand that you, uh, you've you got to act while the hearing is still uh, pertinent because there's a, uh, a requirement that they be held a certain number of days before a town meeting, that doesn't mean you can't hold another hearing. And I, I suspect that some of these are going to occur, uh, incur a bunch of discussions which again goes back to can we wait for until the fall and i think we can i'm fine with removing those if the board wants to continue uh larry steve uh, no, i don't have any thought. larry it's uh, you know I, I i think there are some additional items that are of a non-monetary basis that we should probably um, go and and remove but I, I guess one of my concerns having been through uh cable renewal uh 
negotiation several times in, in my history in public life. A lot of these financial issues have to deal with uh, how those negotiations turned out. And there is always a time frame and, uh, on, on getting to agreement with the cable company. Um, and they are very good at making sure that we he meet the deadlines. And I would hate for any of these three articles, the two on the Griffin Room um, and the one on the school to fall by the wayside because we held them off. So if uh, Joe, after he uh, uh, talks to staff on how those negotiations are going, see a need for any of these to be taken action on to pres preserve them as a, as the potential revenues coming out of a negotiation with the cable company. Um, uh, I, I'd be interested in, in content keeping them in the, uh, uh, the warrant. Through you, Mr. Chair, I was talking about going towards the the bylaw changes and, and blowing past this entirely as a discussion tonight. Right. We, so, we can well, bring that back after we've uh, had those, you know, Joe's made, made the point to have those discussions. One uh, of the, if I could, one of the issues with the Senate's discussion on reducing a quorum, if you choose to reduce a quorum in every draft I've seen of it, it would pr prohibit you from considering any zoning changes or, or bylaw uh, changes on a reduced quorum. But we could still take action to remove them affirmatively tonight, even with yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So I would move that uh, we remove the Charter General Bylaws and Zoning Bylaw Amendments. Uh, the first one does not have a number. Uh, it is on page 38 and see if the town will vote to accept the provisions of Mass General Laws 200A, Section 9, I establish a procedure that the town treasurer dispose of abandoned funds. Is there a second? I'll second that. Any other discussion? Okay, I'll take a roll call. Uh, Steve? Aye. Michael? Aye. Ed? Aye. Uh, Don? Aye. And I'm an aye. Could you just tell uh, me again which one that was on page 38, please? Yes, it's towards the top. It's, it's right under the header, MGL Charter, General Bylaws and Zoning Bylaw Amendments. Uh, so chapter 200A, section 9A, disposition. Yeah, right, disposition of unclaimed property. Now, I think, uh, Carol, you reached out to the Board of Assessors and they're okay with uh, removing the, the Board of Assessors items, those three items, is that, is that correct, or Joel? So it, it's Carol. So there, if we're looking at the um, the articles 31 and 32 of the um, of the initial, I, I don't know if I'm looking at the same document you are. So I'm just going to read it. Adopt MGL Chapter 59, um, Section 5, Clause 18, Hardship Under Age 60. They the agreed to defer that. 38. That's in the package. Adopt MGL, I'm sorry, yep. sorry. Adopt MGL, Chapter 59, Section 5, Clause 41A, Tax Deferral. They have agreed to those two. The third one, they yeah, um, need to bring quick? forward, I'm sorry. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. The first one you mentioned is at the bottom of page 38 in the warrant that's in the packet. The second one that yes. was re mentioned is 59.541A, at the top of page 39. Those, those yeah. are the two that they've mentioned? So I, I don't know if I have the same document that you do. Well, I'm sorry. I think, my, uh, 
on mine, the, uh, these items, the table of contents and the documents that actually match from here on out. Okay, okay. Um, the third item um, is something that the Board of Assessors has to renew every two years. So it's a requirement. And so they have not deferred that. Okay. Mr. Chair, it's Don again. Don. At a time when people have been sitting in their houses for four to six weeks, and uh, some of whom aren't getting paid, uh, do we really want to not leave in the hardship under age 60? I mean, there's not a lot of money associated with it either. But it, it gives them the right to grant up to a $1,000 property tax exemption with taxpayers under the age of 60. Hey, it's Carol again. Carol. So this has to go through special legislation still, and I'm wondering how long that will take. Yeah, this was this is not our call directly. I'm just saying that the message that we're sending, taking that out during this period of time, is kind of a mixed one. Well, the floor's still open. You make a point. Is is I think the reason they do is because it's not it's not going to be a quick or may not even happen. But you're uh, if there's no motion, we can't move forward. So I'll entertain motion or not. Well, how about if I make a motion solely uh, top of page thirty nine to remove the adoption of chapter fifty nine uh, section five clause forty one a on tax deferral. <clears throat> That's the second that's one. Article, that's Article 32. And strangely, it's only has place setters. It only has XX here. If, if I may, Larry, we already have a motion and a second on the floor. And now I'm making another motion. No, nobody made. Carol suggested that. She can't make a motion. Who, who made a motion to remove both of those? Prior it to hasn't been. that, Don, you made a motion to remove the first one. The first one was the uh, MGL Chapter 200. I thought we voted on that. No. I thought we did too, but... Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. I, I, yeah, I, think you, we, I think we did. Well, I thought we yeah, started now, to, and then Cal came on. Now, we moved out to the Board of Assessors, those three items. Okay. And so, right now, Don has is, 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 uh, made a motion on the article 32 of tax deferral. So moved and second. seconded. Any other discussion? Let's take a roll call. I'll start with Jay. Don? Aye. Steve? Aye. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. Uh, Can you again please just confirm page number and subject? I don't have article numbers. Yes. Okay, I, the uh, subject number is chapter 59, section 5, clause 41A, tax deferral. Top Thank of 39. Thank you. Don says it's top. I don't have the article that the warrant right in front of me. Uh, the next one, conservation. Uh, Joe, do you want to get some more feedback from uh, Amy on this one? Wait a second. Before that, there's the amendment of the charter. The select board. I'm not too sure that that isn't going to incur a long discussion too. Well, actually, I would suggest that uh, that one, uh, 34, that one, the next one, 35, and uh, I, I would just as soon make these motions one at a time so we can. Okay, 34. I entertain a motion to. Yeah, I, uh, I move that we remove that we pull in the code of the town of Harwich uh, the charter to change the name from selectman to select board, and that's on the page page 40 at the top. Okay. Is there a second. If the objective is to shorten the meeting, that's not going to leaving it in isn't going to do that. Well, I'll, I'll second it. And I'll take a, uh, any discussion? I'll take a roll call, Steve. Aye. Ed? Aye. Michael? Aye. Don? Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, 35 is the uh, 
general bylaw hazards, uh, chapter 125 is uh, hazards environmental. Move to remove that, uh, it's on the bait, bottom of 40. This is chapter 122, hazardous materials, article 120, one. 120, yeah. uh, yes. no, it's 125. There's another one, 122, we haven't gotten to yet. Here we have. Yeah, 122 the comes board. after the, the selectmen to select board. And then immediately following that is amending chapter 122, at least in the text of the warrant. Okay, we'll go with that then. I've got the warrant right in front of me. I uh, and I believe yeah. it. Okay, is there a second? Of which it one? It pertains to percolate in the... Uh, Chapter 122, Hazardous Materials uh, Amendment. Article 1. Second. A discussion, I'll take a roll call. Don? Aye. Michael? Aye. Steve? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I'm an aye. I move that we pull the general bylaw amendment for chapter 125, hazards environmental. It's at the bottom of page 41. Okay. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. Is not a second. Uh, take a roll call. I'll start with I. Michael. Wait, is that the. Is, is that, the, the, is that Patrick's? Because we can't we can't withdraw that if no, it is. It's not Patrick. Patrick fills up later. They're okay. They're very similar. I'm not sure why it's, in. it's almost in twice. But Patrick fills up as a petition already. Okay, that's all I wanted to make sure. Okay, I started with an I Don. Aye. Michael. Aye. Steve. Aye. Ed. Um, hi. Okay, thank you. Moving next uh, is to uh, my categories is conservation. Uh, remove, remove article uh, pertaining to wetlands protection, chapter 310. It's on the top of page 42. Is there a second? Second. This is something that was worked on, but I don't see this is critical to this uh, town meeting. We can bring that isn't back. even the point because uh, Stephen's absolutely right. It's a moot point. If we don't take it out, we have it. We'll have it taken out on us if they change the quorum. I'll take a roll call. Uh, Don. Aye. Michael. Aye. Steve. Aye. Ed. Aye. And I'm an I. Uh, the next category I have is uh, zoning bylaw articles. We had some discussion of this, I think, last week. I'm, I'm told, Joel, and you can help me out that uh, we have a year in which to bring these back under, into the town meeting. There was some discussion of how much time we had. Uh, that's usually pertains to if it was uh, withdrawn or if it was uh, defeated. There's uh, statutory, I think it might be two years now. Um, so I'd rather not introduce that concept at the risk of further confusing. If the uh, board is motivated by the um, draft language in the Senate that indicates that it would be removed anyway based on the quorum, I would recommend that you continue to proceed in that manner. Okay. But I move that we take out the delete essential services definition uh, on the top of page 54. Second. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, I'll take a roll call vote. Ed? Aye. Steve? Aye. Michael? Aye. Don? Aye. And I'm an aye. Mr. Chair, I move that we remove the zoning district boundary line at the bottom of page 54. I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Ed. So moved yeah. and seconded, Ed. Also, just to note, it, um, any limitations on when, we, when or if we can bring this back um, uh, are all cued uh, on whether or not 
the uh, articles uh, appeared in the warrant. If we take them out and they don't appear in the warrant, then there's no limitations on when we can bring them back. That's correct. So okay. we're That's not helpful. hurting ourselves down the line by removing these. Okay. okay. That's helpful, Ed. I'll take a roll call then. Uh, Michael? Aye. Ed? Aye. Steve? Aye. Don? Aye. And I'm an aye. Uh, next set of articles are the uh, C community preservation articles. Can we hold off on those? I mean, to have a yeah. discussion. I would. I would like to. Next. I would uh, too. Okay, we'll hold off on those. Uh, revolving stabilization OPED funds. Do you want to hold off on those as well, or do you want to take action? I'm trying to get to it. If the board's agreeable, I'd ask you to hold off on the financial yeah. matters as referenced in those other articles. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Joe. Thank you, Joe. Uh, private petitions, that's one we're waiting to see responses of uh, the letter that Joe's, uh, uh, I'm not sure if you sent that or going to send. I'm not sure of the status of that, but it's not. Uh, wait. Mr. Chairman, based on our conversation on Friday, we just have to close that out tomorrow. Okay. Okay. We'll bring those back then, the private petition articles. Uh, customer articles, certainly we need to leave in the herring fishers, fisheries uh, article. Mr. Chair? This is, yes. This is Don. I don't know how anybody else feels about this. I mean, uh, I've had some preliminary uh, discussions with some people, but things like promoting the town of Harwich or the, the libraries, the money involved with that is probably going to stay in this town. And I'm, and I'm kind of loath on short money to cut back on uh, economic activity uh, that's been go that would go on consequent uh, to us agreeing to these things uh, based on the last two months, I mean, it'd be really nice for people to be able uh, to infuse some money for some for things that are customary that we've been doing and that the money's going to stay here. Well, we're not taking action on those, but certainly I agree. We, it would make no sense to stop during this time promoting town power, which we may have real struggle getting businesses going again. Mr. Chairman? We'll bring those back, though, Don. Someone yeah, else talking. Those, those yeah, those are not in the budget, but they might as well be. They've been on the warrant for decades. That's kind of what I'm saying. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You're going to vote them. We're not going to vote them tonight, though. So we're, we're yeah. not going to do a yeah. take moss tonight. We'll bring them back. Well, to Michael's <laughs> point, I think until we actually get the, um, the input that we're looking for for the others, I think that's as much as we can get done tonight. Yeah. I agree. We've, we've made a good start. The issue, do we have somebody on the line? Uh, well, Scott, uh, I think we had, uh, was Patrick on the line, Scott? Yes, he, he still was. Is. Yep. Uh, you want to... Uh, yeah, Patrick, if you're out there, star six, to unmute yourself. There he is. I see. Well, hello, Chair and members of the board. This is Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Uh, I think I for now, ahead. what uh, I think for now, what I'm waiting for is the letter from Joe. Uh, but that was preceded by an email I sent uh, to the chair as well as to Joe, saying that I'm okay with deferring or delaying as long as I don't have to refile. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, yeah. if you and the board are willing, the purpose of the letter was to uh, reach out to petitioners that no, were not aware to engage in a conversation. Uh, we have Patrick Auden, who is aware, 
He's on now with the board. Do, do we want to try and have a conversation this evening to get a sense of how the board would like to act to these petitions? Or would you rather take them up at a later date? What's the feeling of the board? I'd like to have the discussion, but because there's some things that he would be having to do in addition to us having to make a commitment. It would be better to make that have that discussion earlier than later. Uh, he, would have have to, to, he would have to get the petition, the people who signed the petition to acquiesce to pull it too. So you gotta give him some time. From our perspective, we could always, as a board, take the initiative to put it on the warrant. But that that's doesn't, right. uh, uh, so that's a simple way of going. So, Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I if I could, just for this discussion, um, to select, through you to Selectman Howell, um, you've made reference to unwinding a citizen's petition by having all the petitioners uh, sign a document saying that they agree. I'm not familiar with that practice under statute. Do you have guidance from council or? Uh, we, I believe we do because we've done it in the past and it required uh, the acquiescence of everyone who signed it. If, if, that's, if there's something different that I'm not aware of, then I'd be happy to make sure the KP law opines. But as far as Patrick is concerned, I'm willing to make a commitment that whether or not we do agree to uh, support the article that I'd make a commitment that it be on the next warrant. Yeah, this has nothing to do with whether we uh, support or not your article. This right. is just if we want to put it on the warrant itself. And we can do that as the board of selectmen. We could agree to that tonight. But Joe, I'd be interested in the, uh, be a whole lot easier. We didn't have to worry about getting uh, signatures just, you know, removing names from a petition article. The clerk had informed me that that was something that she would require and that she has in the past insofar as the document that's filed there has everybody's name on it. Can we tonight agree that uh, these, in, in terms of Joe's discussions, that we would, uh, for those petitioners that agree to postpone, that we would take the initiative to add it to the warrant? I, I would think we would. Is anyone that would not? I don't think we need a motion. I think we just need a consensus no. we would do it. Yeah. Right. I'm in favor of it. I'm in favor. Well, anyone opposed? If, if I'm not, not opposed. But when we say agree to postpone, are we indicating agree to the motion being made at town meeting to be indefinitely postponement or are we meaning by postpone that they get collect the signatures from the 10 people that submitted the article remove it i believe but what i'm talking about is removing it from the uh this next town meeting warrant okay and the next town meeting we would we would not ask the petitioners to refile. We would add it to the warrant article ourselves. Okay, and that's right. if they got the, the the signatures of everybody who submitted it. If that's required, I think Joel suggested that maybe that may maybe some question. Well, if, you know, I could, if I can clarify my remarks, I'm not able to guide the board on a known legal practice of unwinding a citizen petition article simply because I'm not aware of it. I would defer to our town clerk and past practice. I, I'm just not aware of the past practice. So that's why I can't guide you. I don't know what you've done in the past. I don't know what we can do going forward. What I was suggesting is the simplest way and simplest may not be the easiest is for the proponents to pledge for indefinite postponement, um, a 30 second transaction on town meeting floor. Then when they've done that, the board has already made the commitment that the board would bring it back at a future meeting without the need for it to be petitioned. Mr. Chair, I agree with Joe. It's the cleanest, fastest way and it's rather than 
you know, fooling around with the process that we had done in the past. If Patrick is going to stand up and say, I move that this article be indefinitely postponed, uh, then that is by far easier. Patrick, are you okay with that? Yes, I would be. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Okay. This is Dana. Dana? Actually, ahead, we'd, make, we'd make the motion, but um, this would also give you, if you keep them in the warrant and you do it that way, it would also give you the chance to run them by town council to make sure that the, the next time you do put them in, that the wording is correct and that they accomplish what you want them to accomplish. You, you have that chance to have that review. Yes. Right. Well, okay. the, the, yeah, if so, I may, that, that's absolutely correct. However, that was not the intention of anything that was said thus far. There's a, right. there's a huge legal distinction between citizen petition and what a board of selectmen or agents of the town can put on a warrant. Petitioners have the right to put nonsense on a warrant, if you can use that phrase, and I'm not suggesting that any of these petitioners have, but they have the right to put nonsense on the article, uh, on the warrant, and the town does not have the right to edit that language. So what I'm suggesting is if petitioners are willing to indefinitely postpone, the board is willing to resume their language as they petitioned it. Right. Other, otherwise, the petitioners could still mandate the board put their language on by taking the the effect of 100 signatures at a special, which is entirely right. possible. So I, I, I don't want to get into discussion of language uh, now because I don't I don't know that we can legally make that argument. Our simple proposal is if uh, petitioners indefinitely postponed the uh, article our commitment will, will be to bring it back the next town meeting ourselves without and not ask them to refile mr chair i don't want to get in the weeds here but dana's right that the process would be we get to that article there's no positive motion and hearing no positive motion the finance committee would motion for investment postponement at that point of course that gets us into the IP. Okay. Uh, I think we've had enough on this, Patrick. Are you satisfied? If you're satisfied, we'll move on. Uh, so it will remain on the warrant, and then uh, it's up to Finance Committee to make the request that it be indefinitely postponed. And the uh, Board of Selectmen would then put it on the next uh, town warrant. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Just FYI, council has reviewed this and uh, they have okayed the language as written. Uh, okay. Not sure what the background was around the earlier discussion, but uh, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Oh, Sorry, thank you. Uh, who's uh, Michael? Yes. Joe, are you comfortable with what was just said in closing after what you had said? Um, if I can answer that by asking a question, uh, the question Thank is, you. if I've heard this correctly, I understand that the procedure at town meeting uh, is for the finance for committee. Town, for the fin uh, I'm getting feedback. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we, we can. can. I, we, hear that. we got you. Is, is for the finance committee through a, a member or the chair to make a motion to indefinitely postpone. That's correct, right? Yes. And that's the correct. moderator would ask for a positive motion and, and no positive motion being heard, then the next step would be he would turn to the finance committee and they would make the indefinite postponement uh, motion. Thank There's you. There's a so two-step process. Yep, understood. And so if that process is understood and none of the proponents of the petition make the positive motion, Finance Committee makes indefinite postponement, then the article that would return, it, it, and this is my question, is it that the article that would return at a future meeting is the article as originally presented by the petitioners without change? Absolutely. Correct. Yep, okay. correct. And uh, just like yeah, I'm yeah. Yes, I am. Thank you. 
All right. And then I guess I'd go a little bit further and say in the letter that's being sent out and in whatever agreement gets made with the petitioners, is that agreement going to be in writing? So nobody makes a positive motion at this town meeting and that the articles do not change. Joe, that's a, that's a tougher one. Well, um, I, I don't know that we can have a legally binding agreement to, uh, you know, again, any of the petitioners can make a positive motion, but any town meeting member, any, any, any voter at town meeting could theoretically make a positive motion. I know the effort is to get away from a longer town meeting. So it's possible where the petitioners, the finance committee and everybody else, any number of quick speakers could say, we know what we're doing. We're passing this off. It's going to come up at a later date. But I, I, I'm not aware that we can enter in a legal, legally binding agreement to um, prohibit anybody from making a positive motion. Where there's an act of faith here, whereby yeah, I, the petitioners are not moving forward at, uh, on June 22nd. And when they do not, the reward or the payoff or, or the consideration would be that their article that was postponed resumes at the next town meeting. Um, hey, Larry. Larry. Yeah, yeah, Larry, uh, you know, I, I think we just should make it very clear to all of the petitioners that if they don't go along with our request, then we're not going to put it on the next town meeting warrant. You know, we're all trying to work together here to get this thing into a, you know, much more refined uh, town warrant. And, uh, you know, if they want to work with us, that's great. And we want them to do that. If they're not going to work with us, then we're not, you know, we're not going to push to do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously, it'd be uh, there's no certainty to this, Michael. To get to your point, yeah, you know, the certainty would be if we could remove it from the town war, but that's uh, as we discussed more, more problematic in getting people to take their names off of the petition, basically. May I, may I ask, Mr. Chairman? Very quickly. Yes, please. Um, so some of the members have been able to read the proposed Senate legislation, and it sounds like the Senate legislation covers zoning bylaws, which is a, which was always a very strict process. Uh, to their knowledge, is there anything that gets to the citizen petition articles? We wouldn't be the you only know, that, dealing with it. I, I, I read nothing in the draft, point. but I don't think that's covered in the in the in the article I read. The no, no, we should, wait. we should take a look at that, though. We should definitely yeah. take a look at that. I think it might be my say, sir. And I'll just tell you that based on the conversation we've had, I'm hoping that we revisit this. I think that there are some uncertainties. Um, I certainly respect the Citizens Petition Act under normal times. These are not normal times. Citizens petitions, not all, as Stephen pointed out last week, will be debated. Some citizens petition articles that have been brought forward will be heavily debated. And if we're going to make a gentleman's agreement, I don't think a board of selectmen should be making any gentleman's agreements. If we're going to be trying to make a gentleman's agreement, I certainly would vote against that. It doesn't take much for a positive motion at town meeting floor. And if we're looking at reduced quorums, it doesn't take much to get enough of a quorum to get a citizens petition act. And I'm not saying any of them are going to do it, but if it's possible, I'm not putting my name on. So I think we should look at whatever acts uh, are being created related to COVID-19 and that we should ask for and, and review whatever legal and not be making any uh, consensus on, on what we're going to do. And I would strongly urge all petition article people, no matter what hoops they have to go through to get this back on a uh, future town meeting, that they do that. Um, because of the times that we're in and because we're going to have a reduced quorum and it would not be a fair debate. Okay. I think we've done about all we can in this uh, discussion tonight. We'll, we'll uh, try to find out more what's in the legislature and, and answer some of these questions. Good. Mr. Chair, can well, I recommend well, uh, the, uh, the town administrator uh, just check with the clerk and uh, see what her thinking was? Yep. That's in my, in my to-do list. Yep. Yep, I think you made that. Thank you. We've, I think we've gone through the uh, tonight's agenda then. We're into uh, Selectman's reports.
Um, Mr. Chairman, two hey, things. Uh, Joe. Uh, we'll, uh, Joe, Joe uh, administrator, but uh, can we at least check yeah. with Scott to make sure there's no one else in the queue? Yep. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, let me just uh, give a quick check of my uh, email. Nope, no one else has requested to dial in. Okay, Joe, I got my uh, agenda in front of me again. Administrator's report. Four colon four and five then. Oh, Jesus. No, uh, four is Carol, I think. Uh, Carol's got her own. Uh, Carol has her own address. Yeah, I'm, not sure and, I'm not sure who four and five is. Yeah, um, Scott had uh, texted me earlier that it may have been an effort to regain audio either by channel 18 or perhaps some other no. person on the call. Yeah, it, um, something's different to have with you. Okay, Joe. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Right? Uh, Joe, your administrator's report. Uh, thank you. The only thing I want to bring to the board's attention is I've been asked um, to give an update on CPC articles from years past that were related to administration. Uh, there was an article, a uh, 2018 article that was talking about CPC um, funding of a construction of a uh, modular archive in the basement of the community center. Um, it was a, an item that had been attached to Carolyn Carey. Um, it's something that I had uh, taken over after discussions with her because um, at this point there was um, there's really no uh, no valid reason for us to continue on that anymore. She had done exceptional work on it, but uh, the effort um, is not going to work out. So I'm not aware of what the process would be to rescind articles other than to request it. Um, it was an article that was born out of the administrator's office, so I just wanted to advise the board that unless there was objection and we could talk about it on May 11th, I would be proceeding to direct CPC that we would uh, administration would be rescinding or, or abandoning that article and so they have the funds returned to CPC in the manner in which they do. Um, okay. So it's it's to put it out there for the board. If there's objection, I can bring it up next Monday. If there's no objection, I'll proceed to work on that with CPC. I don't, I don't have an objection. Do you, Don? Yeah, I don't have an objection. It's just that, unfortunately, this is a Byzantine process that the legislature put together to, when they created the uh, Community Preservation Act. We don't have jurisdiction over the articles that get put on. But nonetheless, after that, a town meeting action has occurred and they don't have the, I don't think they've got the jurisdiction to agree to eliminate the whole thing. They would have to sponsor something to regroup the funds based on uh, nullifying the action of the prior town meeting. Because mm -hmm. it was town meeting that approved it, not them. So I, I guess the way I can say it is administration has no current plans to expend the appropriation that was adopted by town meeting in 2018, unless the board has objection and wants to uh, expend the appropriation. If the board agrees no. that we're not going to expend it, I have no, to tell you that. Yeah. To Don's point, I'm not sure. We've had maybe the Italian, I think Italian or Portuguese club that we they didn't spend the money and, went, and the funds went back. I, I'm not sure that article was ever uh, removed, but the funds did go back to CPC. So I'm not sure of the mechanism there. And it was done by a rescission at town meeting. Okay. So my memory fails. So we'll have to do that. I just didn't want to exceed my assumed authority. We'll spend that till. Okay. Thank you, Joe. And that will... Anything else? Yes. Just, a just a reminder that the board's meeting is tomorrow at noon for the um, approval of the letter to the Bureau, Director of a Bureau of Accounts on Deficit Spending. That's the only topic tomorrow at noon. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you, Joel. Uh, Selectman's reports. Uh, I'll start. I just have a short one. I just was informed today by uh, uh, Dave Ryder of the uh, ZBA that Kathy Mueller has uh, decided to uh, resign from the Zoning Board of Appeals. She's been a very active member for six years, and uh, he's uh, made the comment she'll greatly be missed. Uh, that does leave an opening there, and I, I did send uh, 
an email to you, Michael, and you, Don, uh, hoping we can uh, that you can interview uh, a couple candidates remotely, one for Board of Health, one for golf, and there's some action on this ZBA that Dave has recommended. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I got the email, but I think there's a mechanism that we're going to have to do. So I'm go I'd like to talk to Michael and then to you about how that might be done. Yeah, uh, and I don't know the mechanism. I'm sure we can do it somehow remotely, but we'll have to figure that out. You're right. Uh, Selectman is on. You want to continue Selectman's reports? Mercifully for everyone, I have nothing other than stay safe. Thank you, John. Michael? I'm all set as well. Ed? Um, just two, well, two things. One, uh, tomorrow um, from 11 to 1, and I'll be dropping off of it uh, to uh, be with you guys at 12. Um, the, uh, I, the Massachusetts Municipal Association Policy Committee I'm on will be having their monthly meeting in uh one one of the uh, uh topics we'll be taking up is the uh, uh action that the state senate is uh debating on taking on reducing the quorum at town meeting um so we'll be having our last bit of input on that negotiation okay and thank you the, 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 the other thing is a reminder that uh Friday, uh, the Zoom uh, Board of uh, Selectmen's Association meeting uh, will be happening, and it will be probably a good time to uh, for folks to to hear what other uh, uh, what other things towns are doing, uh, uh, especially some of the issues we talked about earlier tonight, uh, beach openings and whatnot. Okay, uh, uh, Steve. Uh, I'm out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that does it. Uh, Dana, I'll just say goodbye to you because we're we're quitting. I'll take a roll call vote to. Uh, well, I'll, I'll take a motion first. I move that we adjourn. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a second? second? I'll second. do roll call then. Don. All right. Michael. All right. Uh, you know what, Joe? We need to go in the executive session, right? Uh, there's no need, so we will not be going to no. executive session. Great. Uh, Ed? Aye. Uh, and I'm an I. So uh, thank you much for a long and meeting. I'm, and, we'll and I'm an I too, Larry. See, <laughs> you're an I too. Sorry. And I was thinking I, I was patting myself on the back that I've actually managed, I think, to call everyone for a roll call vote. But nevertheless, uh, we'll see you tomorrow at noon for a short meeting. Okay. Good night now.